Good evening, good evening, and welcome to Science and Sorcery, the show where science communicators play Dungeons and Dragons to raise money for charity. My name is Daphne Dervedman, I am your host and one of your players, and tonight we continue our epic saga on the moon from a few months ago with our DM and producer Sam Langford. Uh, the sequel to... what was it called, Sam? Ground Control, can you hear me? I can hear Sam. Nope. <laughs> Sam, I'm sure, is saying wonderful things. He's, None I'm of sure us can he hear is. him. Sam is all. figuring things out. In the meantime, let me introduce you once again to three of the four original players. Hi, Sam. Now oh, we can I'm, hear you. Yay. There you go. You're back. Um, we are sadly tonight not joined by Teaziz, who couldn't make it. But returning tonight, we do have the fantastic Catherine Strixon from the wonderful Europe. And our two fancy Australian <laughs> visitors, uh, B. Rich and Kata Sullivan, who once again got up very early in the morning, slash stayed up really late at night, uh, and we're very, very grateful. Um, Catherine, I'm sorry, I couldn't remember if you're in the UK or in mainland Europe, because no, I, I think- have, um, I have reverse Brexited, and I am yes. now in the EU, oh, which is okay. what I shouldn't have done mm. according to all standards, but here I am nonetheless. As someone who will be going to mainland Europe tomorrow and is originally from mainland Europe, I'm jealous. Um, but Sam would be sad if I left, so, you know, which is why I'm leaving. Um, what are we doing tonight? Tonight we are playing an adventure called The Bad Moon Rising, um, which, as our fantastic, original, beautiful characters uh, have done some incredible things in the moon already sam will give us a recap soon but um we will be continuing our journey and on our journey you our lovely audience will be able to assist us by donating money to charity this month's charity is mermaids uh, the uk's charity that supports transgender kids and their families to help them achieve the best outcomes possible um, so for only five pounds or equivalent in your own currency, you can give one of us lovely players or our dungeon master advantage on a roll. Sam, are people allowed to donate more money to make other things happen? Yeah, within reason. Um, within reason. Yeah, we'll, we'll play it by ear and we will say yes. that it's at our discretion if we decide yes. that we will not do the thing you say we're going to do via donation. No. But um, please be creative. Don't make me cringe. Yes. I was going to say, everyone remember, <laughs> everyone remember to make Sam French. Look, we, yeah. the reason this is a two-parter is because we spend half an hour trying to persuade Sam <laughs> to speak in a French accent. Um, Look, it was Sam worth well it. stupidly spent. said the thing and we just jumped on the grenade. It's fun. <laughs> and I think it was worth it. We'll see if our Australian guests sink similarly, uh, but at least Kate isn't coming off of 24 hours worth of uh, modding chats as you were last no. time. I, that's, I'd forgotten I was doing that last time. Yeah, I've had a nap. Look, yep. you get awake me. We'll see how long it lasts, but we get, you get you get post nap me. Very exciting. Um, the other thing, a reminder for our players is science facts get you inspiration on your roles, which will be at Sam's discretion. Um, and beyond that, I think those are all of the announcements from me. Sam, do we have a little recap of what happened last? time last time on ground control can you hear me our players arrived on the moon in search of four missing astronauts who had sent a distress signal back to home base and then nothing was heard of from them since after a small little journey to the moon base where they met a chef um, and ate a lovely meal of peas uh, head butted a bed um, which it took a long time and then they went and uh, found a moon rover, reversed it back into the main room and that was the terrible thing to do so they then all piled into the rover fired out onto the moon's surface came across some whalers on the moon uh, a group of automatons of differing sizes um, which changed size with every description I gave as to how many there were uh, came across a cave where they fought with a Cthulhu style, style beast as well as some tardigrades. Um, we described the first ever known version of the term beige um, for a tar tardigrade's uh, finger. Um, 
which was taken over by some questionable ooze. They then detonated a small thermal device inside the cave, killing the Cthulhu, uh, which Benefin, learning a lot of lessons at the time, was successful in doing so, left the cave and then heard a distress signal on the rover that said, Ground Control, can you hear me? And that's where we'll pick up the session tonight as the players look to head to the dark side of the moon in search of these other astronauts who they believe have been taken by a tardigrade cult. Where I will also let everybody know, I have no memory of what my accent was last time, so <laughs> whatever the voice is that comes out today is the new canon. Because, yep. <laughs> It's been two months, like, it's fine. We can change accents. But I won't, because yeah. I know everyone hates this voice. <laughs> Me included. Accidents change people, you know? Like, there was a big explosion, you know, mm -hmm. you don't know what you yeah. looked like before. Uh, yeah, no. No memory. What would you all like to do? You've heard this voice coming through the rover. Well, as a uh, chief safety officer of this mission <laughs> i'm gonna head over to the rover and fumble with it hello oh anyone hear me hello there's there's a voice hello you you can hear me hello i'm safety officer shep um are you safe uh no not really um <laughs> Safety officer Shep, I we there was a large there was a large disturbance in the moon's surface. Did anyone else feel that? It felt like some sort of large explosion. Yeah, yeah, that, that might have been us. That's a uh, uh, hang on one minute. I'll put them on hold. I don't know if that's an option. <laughs> <laughs> um, at, the at the other end of this, there's just another person like put me on. I was, gonna, I was gonna say Douglas will not stand for you telling the truth to these people. <laughs> he's gonna come over and be like, listen, 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 shit. I think we need a cover. We've got to come up with some other story that explains this ludicrous action we've just undertook. Um. Okay, you're gonna have to take over because I don't really understand what ludicrous action we just took. It was just, there were some scary things and some explosions, and now there's voices. All right, no, no, no worries. I'm only half singed, right? I'll take over. <laughs> I'm sure my brain's not completely fried. I may have lost a lot of confidence just now, but uh, I'll never lose confidence in my ability to win over a man over a comm system. You can just <laughs> see Terrence just being it. like, oh, God. Oh god, it's gonna happen again. <laughs> he's gonna turn, <laughs> he's gonna to, turn to Benethan and Teresh and just give them a big wink. Benethan isn't paying attention. Benethan is just staring at his own hands as if, he, as if he's never seen them before. He's having a bit of a crisis. Okay. Teresh is just gonna like nudge. You want to be you, you good, buddy? None of this is real. Uh, with that, Douglas is going to pick up the uh, device, take it off hold, and be like, uh, you're listening to the uh, Elite Rescue Team of the Astronauts. Are you uh, one of those said astronauts? We're here to help. This is, this is Chief Medical Officer Francis Piddlebottom. Who, to whom am I speaking? Exactly. You're speaking to Douglas Sainsbury, um, hero of the moon, um, slightly singed, <laughs> uh, a little bit uh, downtrodden. You, you, to be honest, I'm not having the best of days. Um, but I would like it if you told us where you are and how we can come get you. Um, I'm I'm hiding I'm hiding in the camp at the moment. Um, managed to get hold of managed to get hold of a communication device to try and send a signal out. Um, you, you're coming to save us. You're singed. What's going on? Yeah, don't don't worry, sunshine, about the singed. Like, please don't. We've all been that. singed every now and again. You know, listen, the moon's a harsh mistress, as the popular saying goes. So, uh, don't worry, we're here to save you. Uh, are you on this, uh, listen, I've got a friend here who doesn't believe in the dark side of the moon, so if you could tell me that you're not there, it'd be very helpful. I'm on the dark side of the moon. Could you 
restate that, please, but in the negative. I am not on the light side of the moon. All right, good enough. <laughs> Are there any directions you can help give us the help? Shep is, uh, Douglas then turns to Shep and he's like, give him a big thumbs up. <laughs> um, if you, if you make your way like, over the horizon when it starts to grow darker, you will start to see campfire light, which I grant you is very strange, but you will that see is it. quite strange. Is there an atmosphere on your part of the moon? I'm in a gated community. That doesn't what? answer my question. <laughs> Listen, uh, I, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come get you. We'll come get you, friend. Don't worry about it. Um, anything else you want to tell me before I hang up on you dramatically? There's a wait, lot. Wait, wait, there's, a, there's a lot of them here. Um, they're they're doing something with the ooze, and I think we've stumbled upon something that is really gonna really gonna change the world back home. But only if we a, a lot to of get that so, sorry, friend. What a lot of what? Could you uh, be clarify a little? A, a a lot of tardigrades in your gated community. Yes, they're they're very civilized. Did you gate them in with you, or they come in from outside the gate? No, they gated themselves in. They gated themselves in? Oh, I see. That's quite a pickle you got yourself in. Uh-huh. The gate's locked on me from the inside, and I don't have the way to go back out again. Uh, okay, that that is a pickle. Hold, hold on one second. Um, let me just, Douglas doesn't know how to hang up, so he's going to put his hand over the comms device <laughs> and turn to Shep and be like, Shep, I think there might be a... They're in a gated community, so uh, we might be dealing with some... Uh, Quite weird famously unsafe yeah so we might we might want to hide uh hide our valuables i don't know if they're gonna find it weird mm. if they're gonna confiscate us maybe they don't want us coming in i'm a bit i don't i'm a bit rough myself did you have something you wanted to say to me him before we hook up well they said it was unsafe and i just wanted to know why but i mean gators community say no more um we're they, they're they're always feeling unsafe. These gated communities, you know, they've been banned there for decades. God knows how long. As the Douglas takes his hand off, you didn't hear any of that, did you? Well, I would agree with you that it's a very unsafe place, and that they, they like, they, they're probably not going to be. They'll, they've, they've said the phrase so many times that it's seared into my brain. Not in my backyard, and uh, uh, it's, it's just, it really, it. I don't want to do anything in their backyard anymore. I want to get out of here, but I first must find the other members of my team and also rescue the whale. Wait a... Oh. Did you say whale? whale? Yes, Kolax, the space whale. Where can we find this whale? Well, inside the gated community, of course. <laughs> of course. Everything's in the gated community. You guys have everything. You've not left anything to the poor and starving on the outside of this I had, gated community. I had nothing to do with this. I did not set up this community. I have been taken here against my will. Listen, I, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go on it at length because we've got quite a, our friend Benethan, well, I say friend, our companion Benethan. Um, <laughs> he's a, he's, he probably would be quite enjoy your gated community. So I'm not gonna rag on it too much. Um, but you know, I would like to see it, and if possible, tear down these gates and ride a whale to the moon. We're on the moon. You're on the moon. Back from the moon. You want to liberate the, 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 the whale from the moon? I, I would like that, yes. Um, I'm sure Colax would be appreciative if you could help get them off of the moon, but yeah. Be be careful when you come here. There, there are lots of them. There are a number of sites to, to look at around. I, I, I was kept in the prison quarters um, alongside my my fellow astronaut inmates, but one by one they were removed and I haven't seen them since. Um, from where I am right now, I can see there is a, a large a communal feeding area. They have a barbecue and it's lots of potato <laughs> salad. No uh, peas? No peas. No, no peas. Shame. Um, shame. I know. Have you met the chef? We have met the chef. Lovely, lovely lad. Oh. Lovely lad. Had a great Big conversation. Fan. Big fan. Big fan, yeah. Um, <laughs> you you want to like, you want to look out for like as many of the girls as possible. Try 
if you get caught, they will all surround you, and I, I will say that they're they're not the pl most pleasant of people. Okay, Roger. We'll come get you, my friend, and we'll come get this whale. Uh, stay tight. Stay behind your gates and your gated little community. Well, I'm not going we'll anywhere. Fetch you. I can't get out. All right. See you later. Have, have fun. Have a nice day. Goodbye. <laughs> And Douglas um, like drops the drops the thing on top of the receiver. I don't know if it hits the receiver or not, so it might still be like, still going. It's just floating. It's not, you're on the moon. It's just like slowly oh. going back down to hang <laughs> up the call. We all good? Everyone hear that? This is a very interesting training exercise. Training I think for what, they're sunshine? trying to challenge your understanding, Benefin. Just, just to push your boundaries, just to make you better at what you do. She's like trying to work out how to say words that are going to convince him to do the thing. Listen. But he's like, this is some horse crap. <laughs> Terrish, <laughs> I fully understand why we're here now. Because we know the dark side of the moon and aliens aren't real. But I'm now convinced the moon isn't real. Because I just killed Cthulhu. Which I could never do in real life, because that's too cool for me. So well, clearly, this is all a simulation. Well, then you have to. We have to see the simulation to its logical conclusion, Obviously. so that you can get out. Yes. Right. Yes. And she looks to the others like, oh, oh, right. We're gonna just lie to him, right? That that's the plan. <laughs> We're gonna just make crap up. Yeah. Cool. Good. All right. <laughs> as you as you do that and look around that's to fine. your friends, you will realize that Glodril, the centaur friend, is not here. No. Uh, um. Uh, Anything? Yes. Are we missing somebody? Look, clearly a centaur in a spacesuit was too ridiculous even for the simulation. Did, did we just... did our friend just die in a cave? <laughs> we can't die in the simulation. If you okay. die in the just, simulation... Like, play, back, play back in her head to see if she can realize when the centaur disappeared. <laughs> like yeah, That yeah. idea of just being like, okay, uh... Because uh, I assume that they've all got like body cameras that they're filming everything, so she's just running a playback. Ben has turned ben his off. Oh, well, Ben is 100% turned his off. You're trying to remember when Glodril might have disappeared? Yeah. yeah. And like, if there were weird circumstances around that that yeah. I just didn't notice because I was too busy dealing with the voice in the the rover and or Benethan in general. I, I was going to say history, <laughs> but could you make insight? On that for me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, uh, 18 plus 2 is a maths 20. In the distance, you can just see four automatons riding your centaur friend. Um, <gasps> like, it, they look excited and it looks as though they're on the hunt. There's still two automatons it's left, though. They're like, yeah. They went whale hunting. Oh. See, yeah. I'm not the worst person in this group. Are they okay? <laughs> <laughs> Just shoots eyes at the other two, like, mm hmm? Mm hmm? <laughs> I, I, think, no I, I think, how far away are they? Oh. The automaton. Uh, they're about 300 feet away at this point. Um, that was quite a long phone call you had. Uh, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, guys, should we uh go look for our friend? I love the sound of that gated community. You were right. We should go investigate. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, we, we are going. We are going to go to. Way back. We are going to go to the not light side of the moon. Are you going to be okay with that? Your mind's going to stay completely intact. It's a simulation. I understand now. I've grown as a person. Ben. I think you might still have some self-esteem issues, but we'll Look, address if that later. My self-esteem <laughs> issues stem purely from the fact that I've never pleased the woman. So maybe the simulation... <laughs> We'll find you a woman in the gated community, Benethan. Terish just like is standing there, like, yeah. <laughs> no, <sh> <laughs> mm. yeah. no, really? If, we, oh, if the I'm simulation so 
if the simulation can teach me how to conceive my children without the use of a turkey baster, all my self-esteem issues will be fixed. This conversation is making me feel very unsafe. Uh, Alright, let's go to the gated community the before he says anything else weird. Not less light side of the moon. And she's just gonna put her hand on his back and just like push him ahead of her. The Oh goodness. So that he is Contact leading with the, the way. woman. <laughs> yeah, no, like she's like, I'm gonna regret all of this, but like we've lost <laughs> the, the the two automatons, <laughs> like hearing what's going on, have started to set up a camp and like a little like dome. I, you all look a little bit rough, and it looks like that one is losing it a little, so... Uh, if you'd like, there's a sleeping area, if you'd like to take some time to rest. And also, Ben, could Everyone you roll me a wisdom so nice. please? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Nine. Um, you're saying these things out, li- out loud, but in the back of your mind, you do not believe them. You are starting to realise that your version of reality does not align with reality. But for now, you're okay. You're all gonna together. Gonna keep that to myself. <laughs> but yeah. When you first need a long rest? Uh, if I've managed to come out like. unscathed with everything, so but it's yeah. up for you guys. If you, if I've used a couple one, of spell slots, but other than that, I'm, ha- I'm ca- able to keep going. Um. It did say it's going to be dangerous out there, but we could just try and storm the gates. Uh, I mean, I don't think I don't think we're going to have that much difficulty getting through the gates to this gated community. Kate looking at her spell list, being like. <laughs> I think we're good. Um, <laughs> I will say I have knowledge that the other players don't have, uh, which is that Sam set the encounter difficulty to deadly. So, yeah, we're being given not... the opportunity. So we're for just walking rest. in the door. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, we don't know that in um, canon, though, do we? That's the thing. No, no, we uh, don't. I mean, but... you, might, you might know that because she's yeah. like, we're we're a team, so she, you might have seen her you know, like randomly be very successful at opening things, <laughs> like <laughs> just like. like Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. But yes, yeah, Sam is giving us the opportunity for a rest, so if we want to take it, mm-hmm. um, we can. But the I'm happy the to. The automatons keep are going. quite happy to just take this thing down again that they've spent a lot of time, like here and effort putting up. Listen, we n- we never asked them to do that for us. No, they're no. just being helpful. Oh, look, Sam's laying a guilt trip. How about we take a long rest so that we can set up like long rests are relative right like it, it yeah. don't necessarily mean you have to sleep you don't need to sleep but you can rest and do planning and things like that so let's say we're like trying to make sure benefit isn't going to say anything mm. stupid they're just going to spend like a good hour and a half of this downtime just being like all right so what are the rules with people we don't know we don't I've never talk to strangers correct <laughs> like there's this entire back and forth that's just like it's like she's talking to like an eight-year-old who's being allowed to walk to school by themselves for the first time. Listen, I was <laughs> like, homeschooled. I don't no. know any better. That's fine. That's why we're going through the rules so we remember how to behave like a person in public. <laughs> Would it help us if people didn't know where we were? When we break in. With this idea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you look into Cass Pass without a trace. Is that what you yes. to do? Yes. Yes. I mean, maybe when we get closer, once we work out where we're going. Okay. Brilliant. I will. Yeah, I do this. have a plus yeah. nine to stealth if you want In me mind. to try and open the gate for you guys. Sure. I know, but imagine if that was a plus nineteen. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you will just leave the game and like move out into the real world. The real world. Um, this was clearly all set up by my mentor. Jalux aims. How do we know when Jalux we've done a long owns. rest if there's no sun rise and sunset? The robots wake Internal up. Internal body nice clock massage. and circadian rhythm. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. You'll do Science! Yeah. You you will follow up by having your usual eight hours of sleep and then be ready to go. Unless we Ben's a Ben's an elf. He is an elf. So no he sleep. doesn't sleep. He doesn't sleep. Which tracks. 
he meditates, but he says oh, <laughs> the whole oh. time. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we've chatted to Ben before about... she goes to sleep. Terish casts sleep on <laughs> Ben <laughs> just to be like a shush. <laughs> Let Magical sleep, sleep, sleep does not sleep. affect me. I'm so sorry. I know. I know. I, think I, play, I play enough elves that I'm like, I'm aware. Ben like... does try to cast sleep on himself every night, Maybe. and it has never worked. Yeah. Oh. Being a paladin. I think it's more her just being like, I have to try something. No? Damn it. <laughs> Go to sleep. Stop making noise. So, uh, you can all take a long rest. The automatons will happily take down their little shelter afterwards. Um, you can climb back into the rover and head off unless there's anything else that you'd like to do. I think we should go in the rover. Yeah. Who's driving? I'm guessing someone else will get there before Ben this time. <laughs> Just I would say I am not the best person to drive a vehicle. What is the skill check for driving? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I would say dexterity and making sure that you're not driving into rocks and um, such like. If we're traveling through mountains or something that being, can be classed as the Underdark, we are not slowed by difficult terrain. It's not the Underdark. Are... You're on the moon. Is it? Is it mountains? Um, is it the, moon is the it mountains? Dark. It's the over dark. The there's no, there's no mountains yet. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Damn it! Sam. You don't believe the dark side of the moon Listen, exists. You can't have it as a favorite is... terrain if you don't believe it exists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do? Yeah, yeah, if you don't believe an area exists, you don't get like those kind of no. advantages <laughs> to your character. That is absolutely <laughs> fair, and I fully support it. You have to learn the meaning of Christmas first. Yeah. <laughs> I've never celebrated Christmas. I'm Jewish. This exists. No, uh, no, this that doesn't exists mean you can't know the meaning of Christmas just because you don't celebrate the meaning of Christmas. No, clearly. You can understand other people's perspectives. No. And as she's saying, no, as she's saying this, she's like, who am I talking to? <laughs> nope. I think Douglas you is going to grab the wheel while this is happening. Yeah, sensible. <laughs> I think that's wise. Okay. And no one else want to drive? I'll. Uh, I'll be passenger I mean, princess. That's fine. I'd love to drive. <laughs> maybe what? Maybe when you're older, Ben. Ah. Yeah, Michael. Ben, you have to sit in the back seat so you can watch out if anything happens behind us that we're not aware of. Ooh, smart. I'm gonna like mm -hmm. perch in the back. Uh, you don't and need to. You out. climb into the back seat and realize there's a booster seat. Perfect. Um, booster seat with Ben. Yeah. So Michael Kane is driving. Um, <laughs> Cherish is in the passenger seat. Shit, are you climbing in the back alongside Ben? Uh, I'll sit next to Ben, I guess. Cool. I'm on my knees in the booster seat, staring out the back of the vehicle. Are we there yet? You know what? <laughs> Respect that. That's a very safe action. I mean, you're, are you wearing your seatbelt? No. Okay, well, it's a simulation, safe. not wearing this seatbelt. <laughs> at least it's low gravity, I'll take less fall damage. <laughs> You'll fly True. further up when we crash. <laughs> but do you come back down oh, again? Oh, that's, that's how we lose Ben. <laughs> this is how he dies, that's fine. <laughs> Just blows off into space. <laughs> so, the automatons knowing where you're going will be like, oh, we're not going there. We're, we'll, we'll go and find your friend. Um, Maybe we'll find a whale. Maybe you'll find a whale, but we won't be there. Goodbye. I'm sure we'll all have a whaley good time. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for the rest of the spot. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> no, it was not. It was terrible. It was they, truly bad. <laughs> they, they give you nothing on that and just yeah. turn their turn their vehicle around and leave. Um, you start up your rover. You start to head towards the horizon where you can see the light starts to recede. And... Uh, not too far over actually you don't really need to go that far over into the dark side you will start to see some campfires up ahead but Douglas if you could please roll me just a dexterity check like a full dexterity roll to see if you're managing to avoid anything as you go okay I roll uh... excuse me a 7 plus 3 so 10 
uh, with a 10, you're thinking, oh, this is this is perfect. Like, there's like really good controls on this on this rover. This has never been easier. And then all of a sudden, you drive straight bumper first into a large boulder that was clear as day for anyone to see. Um, and I need everybody else to make me dexterity saving throws, please. As Douglas's face hits into the, the rover steering wheel, um, and you take two points of bludgeoning damage as you have a bloody Amazing. nose. That would be a natural 20. Okay. For a 25. Very nice. 15. 15. 10 plus 5. Oh, also a natural 20. Ooh, um, two natural 20. I mean, I'm Passenger Princess. That makes sense. You guys are safe in the back seat, and I'm just getting shaken around next to Douglas. Okay. Uh, so... I like to think Shep buckled me in at some point. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I no, actually. Try to not let you notice. I, I would say that probably not, because then you might end up with like lunar whiplash which is not mm. great um but what does instead happen is you are both launched from the vehicle but managed to land perfectly on your feet in front of it um terish you're you're just kind of bobbed forward in your seat and back again looking at douglas with his bloody nose um and your two companions who are standing maybe 35 to 40 feet in front of you completely fine yeah do you see what i mean chef I could never do this in real life. Could you? Oh. I wouldn't be down on yourself. I mean, also, have you noticed that the, the, the moon is like really nice and it doesn't let you fall very hard. So oh, that helps, the, I guess. That's the simulation. No, it's just the moon being nice, I think. I don't think the moon's real. I don't know what to respond to that. <laughs> I'm gonna walk back to the car. <laughs> that, okay, Terry's so just gonna call up like, Shep, don't, I'm gonna power don't, pose. Just don't. Just, just don't. <laughs> Douglas is um, just gonna like hold his nose and be like, I, I, I don't think this pain should be part of the simulation. Whoever's made the simulation is quite uh, sadistic. So is Douglas on board with this being a simulation now? No, I think he's just a bit yep. concussed. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Terish is just going to pat Douglas on the sh shoulder and cast Healing Word because that just looks painful. And she's just like, I'm not dealing with blood everywhere on the moon. Um, floating. You can have oh, max points of healing. Uh, eight oh. points of healing to Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Ben, Shep, you can climb back in. You reverse away from this. Uh, boulder in front of you and continue your journey on as you do you notice you move into a much darker area now and you have seen these campfires up ahead but what you you notice with the rock and for a moment Benethan's like I'm in my place but no because you don't believe it exists the rock starts to grow into large sheer cliffs on either side with a long straight valley down the middle um, on the left hand side uh, there is a clear path that will take you to the top of a cliff, which might give you an overlook um, into where you're going, or you can head straight on through. How much of this can we see, by the way? Because I'm assuming we've got some lights on the buggy, right? Uh, yeah, you'll have you'll have some decent lights, meaning that you're not going to crash um, into anything in front of you. Okay. All right. I, I think Douglas is going to. Put a bre put his brakes on. I think he's got a little bit of a a little bit of a tension headache after hitting the steering wheel. So he's going to stop the buggy and he's going to turn around a bit and says, "All right, listen. We could drive through here, and uh, I think this might be a little bit more dangerous than the last time. And we all saw how that turned out. Um, or we can go up there and have a little look see. Maybe we'll see I'll a that one." I like viewpoints. My own viewpoint, but also like outlooks. How are you feeling, by the way, Benefin? Great. Yeah? A bit dark? Yeah. I can always make it lighter, and I'm just going to cast light on my bow, which is oh. made out of plywood. Oh. Plywood? I bought it plywood. at the Home Depot, Sam. Okay. Uh, roll for roll for splinter. 
Um, <laughs> Eighteen. <laughs> yeah. You, Eighteen splinters. Um, yeah, you you're just immune to feeling, so you've got yeah. splinters, mm -hmm. but nothing's happening. <laughs> General, feeling. <laughs> this is getting as dark no as the moon. <laughs> um. Okay, you can drive uneventfully up to the overlook, um, and as you get up to the top, you are able to peer down into um, what is unmistakably this Tardigrade camp that Francis Piddlebottom told you about. Um, it's a large camp, there is a lot of space here. Um, there are large stone walls all around it, one large big gate across, across, across the front. This is very much a gated community. Um, and you, you will see that there are four watchtowers on the corners and a number of structures in the middle. I will actually let you see what it looks like. <gasps> um, this is the view of the camp from the ground, from above. Um, there are five, six main areas. There is the, the workshop area where you can see that there are tardigrades moving around. They are um, carrying tools, moving equipment around. There is a storage area. There, nothing seems to be happening there except for boxes moving in and out. Uh, the mess area is where there are lots of little huts, um, small children tardigrades, there are adult tardigrades, all in this area. A training ground where they are firing bows, using weapons, getting, getting swole. Um, and then... Uh, <laughs> An area at the back <laughs> that is different from the rest and is quite clearly a leader's area somewhere for the, the bosses of this space. Are these tardigrades walking on two legs or are they just doing everything hunched over like we're used to seeing them? They are walking on two of their six legs, I believe. I think they have six. And then some and we're presuming the And we're presuming the watchtowers are also occupied by tardigrades so you'd be looking at the one from the uh the bottom left and you can see two mm -hmm. of them that are kind of sharing the sharing the patrol so uh i guess this is the gator community and how far... all you want it to be honestly i would have preferred it if there were more militias but this works how so far above are we Knowing Well, just thinking what we know about the gravity on the moon. If we were to accelerate the car off the cliff, where would we land? <laughs> okay. It also probably depends on how fast we drive the car. Yes. yes. That's how the rabbits. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but I'm like speeding off middle of the vessel. You, you want to go full Thelma and, Thelma and Louise off the edge of the cliff is what you're yes, saying. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, no, I'm just, I'm not, Ben may want to do this. Dagmar is just trying to get an idea of whether or not this would be reasonable, which I don't think it is. My character gives me psychic damage. So, you know, we may have, I may have to do what he wants, but. I am, I am thinking that like, we, maybe I have played too much Zelda because I do want to dive off the cliff. Yeah. Just I think, ascend I think a lot of us up like, again if we get like stuck somewhere. Yeah. Exactly. Um I mean we have to go down there. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think so I was like I, that's gonna depend on how fast we're going, because eight miles an hour is gonna set us pretty much off the edge of down. <laughs> Not uh <laughs> Does I don't know how any... fast lunar rovers move, and these might go faster. I don't know. Does anyone um, have any spells that might propel us forward? Ooh, I mean, check. we can run faster than that. That's not... <laughs> I can cast. <laughs> I, mean, that's, I can cast a sleep way. on us, <laughs> and at least we won't feel anything until we impact. <laughs> Just land completely unconscious in the middle of the camp. Okay. Which I mean, arguably. If you're unconscious because you're all floppy, you take less damage when you hit the ground, but that's not... 
I already have inspiration for science facts, so I'm just going to sit here and pretend like... <laughs> also, and that is also... would be awake, because he doesn't <laughs> sleep. Yeah! <laughs> it's what he, again, it's what he deserves. Um, true. It's also why drunk people are less likely... Drunk drivers are less likely to be injured than someone they might yes. hit with their vehicle, because you're floppy when you're drunk. And you don't tensile your yeah. muscles up. Um, it's also why children, when they fall over, don't hurt themselves as much yes, as yeah. older people, which is it's usually just, a nicer way. Than just to say, like... this isn't as condoning drunk driving. This is just as no, no, no. explaining That's why I was like, why I'm drunk take us away drivers. From that <laughs> um, I, I was going to say as well, if we are in the business of some going off cliffs, the actual damage to your body usually occurs after you've come off. So you do the bounce, you bounce of initially, and then mm. it's where you land afterwards that hurts you. Yeah. So if is. we just, if we can bounce off the ground and land and then conveniently. Stop. Yeah. If something. you're having this conversation out loud, you're just gonna watch Terish just like bouncing on the spot because she's just gonna go higher because that's how moon bouncing works. It is. Being on trampoline. It's great. Marmaline. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> Your constitution safe, yeah. Because the momentum is bad for you, basically. There's lots of, yeah. Why? Because your heart goes, I don't know what's going on. Nope. <laughs> That's crazy. You kind of need that bit. Let's not do that. Yeah. No, no, no. No, let's not. Look, don't give Ben the steering wheel. That's all I'm going to say. We're not going to. <laughs> don't Good. Think I, I think we've left the driver's seat, though. I mean, I definitely yeah. have. So Douglas is looking over the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I would I would assume Benethan is probably standing with you because Benethan is yes. looking was looking and thinking about running. I was, off the yeah. Cliff, so. yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. No. Cool. Um, so uh, you found yourself a buddy. It's. <laughs> I put my hand on his shoulder. There it is. <laughs> Finally, a father figure. <laughs> One day you'll be big and strong like me, Sanjay. I am so I'm so short. One day, son, everything that you, everything the light touches will be yours, which is none <laughs> which of is this because we're on the dark side <laughs> of the moon. <laughs> um, yeah. Do we want a plan of attack? <laughs> Sorry, I'm fine. I'm good. Um, um, can I clarify, Sam? The the bits on the outside of that, not where the gate is, are. Uh, the height that we are standing on are low walls. Um... Okay. <laughs> What's your same? Yeah. Yeah, but the, and then there's sort of like a gap between them and whatever we're on, like distances. What? Yeah, that's what I was trying to piece together. Yeah. Well, we know this guy is in the prison, so why don't we climb along the rocks and then jump over the wall and break into the prison immediately? Or we can kill everyone in the camp. That's also an option. Is it? Yeah. And yeah, my first thought, putting myself in Ben's headspace, was kill them all. Um, and I'm yeah. not even and, joking. And, and, and I think if Ben looked at Terish, she would be looking at him like, are you absolute, like, you, she doesn't do, uh, like, mad very often, but this is a don't, don't you dare, how dare you expression of no. Like, ju just a, you're not arguing with her at this moment. This is just a no. And you get, like, a flash of, I mean, for those who forget, she's a protector Asima. She, she she gonna look a little not quite full scary mode but like a little, 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 little bit little scary <laughs> okay well then we'll just clamber over the rocks like... Ooh. I, I mean I I, I, I can <laughs> do it oh. I'm gonna make Plus. an inside check in relation 25 natural 20 plus 5 you wanna go <laughs> I had got a natural 19 plus oh wait shit I have advantage not 17, not 19, plus 5, so I'm one below five, you. So I still begin yeah. by 1. <laughs> I'm slightly intimidated, but also I realize you're a liberal, so I'm not that intimidated. Oh. 
shitting yeah. my pants. That yeah. is true. Yes. <laughs> That's like and whilst I'm a liberal, I'm a woman, so <laughs> fights. <laughs> and Benetton's had a all Asamar liberals, or is it just <laughs> No, in Benetton's head, anyone who disagrees liberal, to him is, is a liberal, so... <laughs> Just see something coming down from heaven, like, ah, a liberal! <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> um, I think Douglas is going to get back in the car driving seat, and he's going to uh, like uh, try and nudge Shep on the way past, and be like, uh, do you reckon we should leave him here? I... I I, I, I don't I don't want to be kind unkind to the boys. He's been through a lot, but I don't really want all the women and children to die. Yeah, he actually all had men, a good idea. Or any of the tardigrades. And then he had to ruin it by saying that. I, I'm just. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, not really sure how we do the We do the creeping team. in, but the not the murdering part. The creeping in, but not the murdering part. Do we all feel like that's a good? We can do that. Yeah, I gave two suggestions. Like Why are you being so mean to me? Because you suggested that we kill every person in the camp, including the children, and we made someone had to say it. Yeah, that's not good. Did they? <laughs> Did they have to say it? <laughs> Douglas starts again. The body. You're still just getting <laughs> this. Like it's probably just a residual. Shuffle away like... slightly. Mm. <laughs> Douglas is slowly driving the uh, buggy back down the. <laughs> I'm gonna get back into my booster seat, sit normally, and buckle my seatbelt and just look there down at my knees like a child who's been scolded. Yes, mom. Yeah. Like... <laughs> Sorry. It's like a weird. Family. Oh God, D Douglas and Terry are in the front seat, like mom and dad on the on the road trip. To the... <laughs> Terrible campsite. Chef's oh, like no. leaning away from you in the car, like. <laughs> Oh, the teenage Back, sibling. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just That's like when I was homeschooled. There it is. Mm -hmm. You can't blame everything on homeschooling Benetton. That's not how it works. Looking in the equivalent of the rear vision mirror. No, this just <laughs> reminds me of it. It's just the mm -hmm. same. I swear we didn't have this family mm -hmm. dynamic when we had a centaur with us. There's something about <laughs> nope. <using> a <laughs> centaur. <laughs> we we need four, and four is a family the dynamic. Family dynamic and their horse. <laughs> yeah, Ben's only happy when it's the nuclear family. That's it. Oh. 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 I hate this character so much. M Mom, dad, the heir of the spare. That's not good. That's <laughs> right. Like... And oh. he's very much the spare. <laughs> he's just being constantly reminded he's Matilda's less cool cousin. <laughs> yeah. So you're driving back down. Yes, please. Oh my god. Yes. And what you see ahead of you is just a long canyon, rock on all sides, and a large gate in front of you. And you just see um, on the on the gate the name Jillian Fates. Do we recognize the name? We should, right? Uh, you can make a, a, a history check on that, should we? Okay. Uh, I won't, because there's really no point with the stats that I have in history. Yeah, I got it. Or a maybe two. there is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. I got a 19, which is. Ooh. Apparently, I read. Shit. Apparently, this dice is great. Uh, I got another natural 20. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa. Plus nothing. Okay. Plus nothing for clarity. With a, zero. a 19 and a natural 20, you will both remember that this individual, Gillian Fates, mm -hmm. is a philanthropist, a extremely wealthy individual um, who plows their money into what on the outside seems to be incredibly well-meaning purposes, well-meaning endeavours, but everyone's a bit suspicious of them. Is there a symbol along with their name? Uh, I don't know, like a like a small bird, or a. Uh, it's actually a big infinity sign, or a paperclip. Paperclip. Clippy. Oh my god! Um, is this the entrance to the game? camp, or is this a different gate? This is the entrance to the camp. This is the gated community. And it's very much a big gate. Yes, a very big gate. Can we see through the gate? 
Uh, yeah, you can see through it. It's um, you're meant to be able to see through it to see what you're not able to achieve. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I think we're gonna. Uh, there's, is there an intercom at the door? So do you want to like ring a doorbell like when you go into like a posh person's house? Um, so you're probably still about a hundred feet away from it, so you wouldn't know yet. Um, okay. All right, I'm gonna I turn. Think, um... Oh shit! Sorry, oh, Douglas is gonna turn turn around and be like, "Remember, no murder in children." Yes, Dad. <laughs> shit! I didn't. It's it's amazing that we need that reminder. Um, uh, you know, I really liked um, you know, just to give Benison a a credit where he's due. He he had a good idea about um going all sneaky like and maybe maybe um i've, I've also got a, a a sort of a a knack for making us extra sneaky if that would help can we um maybe this is a dm question but can we use our sneak effects on the buggy or does it only work on each of our persons it would only work in each of your persons rather than the buggy so you would have to stash it or take it right up okay maybe when we should leave the buggy go on foot i think so can i, I suggest so. that when we sneakier. leave the buggy we turn it around so that if we need to then we can like so we park we reverse park the, the buggy oh That's we can also smart. just reverse away <laughs> no, we, that'd be very dangerous we can't see where we're going I think they did it in Fast and Furious once. Cherish is going to end up I'm murdering Benethan by the end of this. <laughs> yeah. Do we hide the buggy? Is there anywhere we could hide it in here? Like an outcrop? We can park it behind? Or... Yeah, yeah. There's lots of kind of like very similar coloured rock that is similar to the, the buggy. So it's inconspicuous amongst it. Okay. I want to like parallel park inside the most inconspicuous rocky outcrop. As an elderly gentleman, can you please make me a dexterity check for your parallel parker? <laughs> I'm imagining that scene from Austin Powers. <laughs> Given I, I have a I got scar a... down my nose from a time someone badly parallel parked and their car wheel was sticking out, and I, as a child, hit the car wheel with say, my can, bike. Can I, can I help by being like, no, ten, ten more, 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 like... Driving instructor style. Yeah, um, you can roll with advantage if you're being helped. With okay, Karish. good because I got a nine, so I would like another go. <laughs> <laughs> and that time I got an eight. Okay, so not helpful. Was distracting. Sorry. Uh, Terish is um, shouting behind to try and um, get you to park in properly, um, and you're getting really flustered. I imagine Ben's also shouting instructions. Um, and you might. No, my to... longbow of warning is just making a beeping noise. Oh, one of those. And it's just like very, very annoying, actually off putting beep, noise. Beep, and you, beep, you beep. like bust one of the brake lights on the back left. You may get a parking ticket. You have a ton of great have parking tickets. Me well, it's a gated community. They only want the best around here. But we're okay. not in the gated community. We're outside oh, the gated even, community. Even in the area they don't care yeah, about. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's true. Because, we're in a lawless zone. Because they don't live there. So they don't have to look at for those people. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to... Douglas is going to turn around. He's going to be like, none of you saw that. None of you. Good, Ben. Good. We'll continue like this. <laughs> I immediately trip up or something. <laughs> <laughs> we're not even out of the car yet. I know. I trip trying to, like, I forget my seatbelts on. <laughs> Better than Shohara right. doesn't use a seatbelt. So you climb out of the rover, and are you are you casting anything? Is I will cast Pass Without a Trace. Uh, well, yeah. if, if you, I, I also have that, if, if you want to save your, your, um, Barclays for okay. other things. Okay, sure. Um, can we all just agree to change uh, spell slots to sparklies for the rest? <laughs> yes. Yes. That's a great name. Does it look like sparkles when he uses magic? I, I don't know. What does what like does magic? No, look it looks like? like a mirage. It's that slightly shimmery, like 
shifty thing that you get when it's a hot road and you get the mirage above it because he's not quite sure whether it's actually real. Yeah. So I, I like the idea that Ben's nice. does. Ben's do sparkle, but it's just completely beige. Yeah, beige, yes. a beige blanket. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're all covered in a beige blanket. Uh, oh. <laughs> a plus ten oh. to all of your. Um, I will, but I'll, I'm gonna let Shep cast it, so I, it's gonna look different. Okay, so uh, no yeah. beige blanket. Okay. No beige blanket. No. Which is no. What does it look Shep... like instead? If it's not beige. Mm. Uh, Shep's actually just gonna. Hang on. <gasps> oh shit! And then like dust. <laughs> Is gonna cover everyone. You can see, like, Terry, she's Excuse like, me. not dusting herself off because obviously, like, it's magic and she can't, but just that idea of, like, Ugh. Ugh. it's not. <laughs> can we still see <laughs> through our visors? Yeah, you can still see. You, you might have to <laughs> just give her, yeah. give her a little snot wave. You're fine. Just get the little <laughs> windscreen wiper okay. going on the front. Let's go to this gate then. Let's see if there's any way in. Okay. Are we not going around? Hmm. If we're Can hiding, we, we... we shouldn't go through the gate. We should go over the wall. But if we're What's already the around it, like uh, lots um... of boulders and like. Can we see the layout again, Sam? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I just remembered one of the things I get at level six, and suddenly my brain just went, "Oh, <laughs> things just got better." <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So it looks like maybe we, if we could climb a wall, we could get in through a watchtower. No, that's is that on the wall or is it space? It's behind space. the wall. The watchtower is well. There, there. You could jump it if you wanted to. Yeah, because the walls are only 10, 15 feet, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do we did we see guards at the gates? Uh, no, you don't actually see guards at the gates. Hmm. Interesting. Well. I, I like the idea of um, not going through the gate because the gate doesn't look very welcoming anyway. What are you talking so, about? Uh, <laughs> it's just so big and over the top, I think. I usually I'd agree with you here, but I do have to say a watchtower full of guards also not very welcoming. As these things mm. go, what do we reckon? Well, well, maybe we don't have to go by the watchtower. Maybe we can just go somewhere in the middle and straight up the wall. On. Yeah. All right. Why not? Let's get up on the. <laughs> How good are we at climbing the wall? <laughs> so very valid question. Oh well, we can I mean, just if, jump if over the wall. If... It's ten feet high. Yeah, but with moon gravity. Oh. Okay. Okay, okay, I think we should go this. around all the way to, war to the prison and then jump over there. There's a, there's a hole in the prison ceiling. Uh, Are there holes true. in the prison ceiling? Yes, there's like skylights. Bet. We could jump into prison. <laughs> we could break into prison. That's the opposite of what society wants you to do. This sounds like a great idea. So I will recap to this where you all are right. right now. You are still at your car, <laughs> like at the at this valley, walking down towards the the gate. You oh, yeah. have to take a look. Terrence is just sitting on the front of the car, just waiting for everyone to make a decision because yeah. it's quite clear that they're having a three way three way debate. She's just like, I'm just gonna wait. This is fine. So you could hop the hop the wall and just land on the ground and try to sneak. You could hop the wall onto a tower and try to sneak. You could hop the wall and try to hop into the prison. That seems to be your three options. Should we um, leave it to Terish since the rest of us seem to have all different ideas of what to do? Yes. Tiebreaker. Just I'm roll a d6. That's what I'm trying to get out of my. Like, <laughs> okay. All I of my you dice are like clearly your packed face together. Like, you where, didn't where, to the side. All no, of my no, dice are so in a box, and all my d6s had interlocked with each other, and I couldn't Oof. get the dice out of the Oof. section. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's go with uh, one to a ship. So, so who had which things that I have a. Who was saying. Hop what? into so, prison for Ben. So that's three and four. Douglas was gate, I think. 
five and six, and yours then is just like scale the wall. Not just scale the wall prison. and sneak sneak over. Okay, one and two. All right, here we go. That's two. <gasps> scale along the sneak. wall. Feels fairly sensible to Kate Brain, so it's okay, yep, Douglas. Good. I'll give you a leg up, and I'll try not to throw you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you thinking of my frail little body after all of that. So the, the decision has been made that you will scale the wall and try to sneak. Um, mm -hmm. You can leave your rover behind and start to make your way towards the gate and can peel off to try and find a way to go over. Um, could you all roll me a stealth check, please? And remember your plus 10. Find mm -mm -mm -mm. Not, not natural. 17, because I rolled a 2. Like 23, and then plus 10, so 33. And, yeah, non natural 20 plus 10, so 30. Cool. Um, for once, you're all able to stay quite quiet. <laughs> um, what order are you walking down towards the box in? I feel like well, we, all, I'll we, lead we all would try to make sure that Ben goes last. I Ben oh, no. would want no, to go no. last because he is an archer, and also I was he's not gonna let slowly not gonna humming let ben the mission go last, impossible. But I was gonna let Ben go second last. That's fine. so that Ben doesn't peel off and go do something stupid. <laughs> he is slowly, he is silently second. humming the Mission Impossible theme, which is why I only got a seventeen on stealth. Step your first, right? I'll go last. I'll, I'll lead. So, yeah. So if you want to go in second, Douglas? Makes sense. Seventeen. Is again. it something? Is it something I can see? Because if I can see it, I have advantage. Okay. Well, the first one was a t two, so um, eighteen. Hey. Seventeen. <laughs> Whoa. Two. The cracked paving stones because if you step on a crack, blah 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 blah, rhyme scheme from being a small child. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Sam, oh. this is the second time you've done this in a TNT session on stream. Sam, Sam how how thick is the atmosphere? Um, how how far away does the how does the gravity work? How how quickly is is uh, better than coming back down? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I like this Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have time for a reaction to like try and like grab him before he flies off, or is it way too quickly? <laughs> He's behind, behind you. I oh, might be in Kanto form. He is behind you. That's true. I <laughs> I'm being launched straight up, or am I also moving forward? Yes. Uh, Just say. completely vertical. Boing. I can see everything. 
Gott. <laughs> Should I roll another wisdom save? Oh, that one's good, actually. That's going to be a 19. Yeah. That's clearly fake, because I've never seen the curvature of the Earth, even though that's what the horizon is in real life, but Ben doesn't know that. I'm from the Netherlands. I know what the horizon fucking looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Accelerating? Science. What's terminal velocity on the moon? <laughs> moon. Well, yeah, point of order. What is terminal velocity the, on the moon? The gravity of the moon is one sixth of Earth gravity. So surely yeah. the damage benefit Let's do the math, would be one shall sixth. we? No, because there well, hang is on, hang on, no hang on. terminal velocity on the moon because there's no force counteracting the pull of its gravity. Oh, true. Because terminal velocity um, is a result of the atmosphere interacting mm. with the Earth's gravity. Yeah. But there is no so, atmosphere. Yeah. Let me work out how fast you're going when you hit the ground. Hold on one second. <laughs> um. <laughs> The, so on so Earth, gravity is 9.8 meters per second, right? It's on the moon, it's on only 1.6. So that 1. is 6. the velocity of things on the moon. They don't accelerate. Yeah. No, 1. but how 6, fast? Yeah. My, my question is, how fast are you going when you hit the ground? Um, which is yeah. what I was just trying to work out, but I now need to translate. But I meters, would only be going 1.6 meters per second. Well, that's the acceleration on the moon. So it's, mm. That's the acceleration so on the moon. Now, that's that's the, true, now yes. we're getting into F equals MA. Yeah, a... which is why I'm like, excuse me for one second while I do some maths. <laughs> 100 feet is... Well, 100 feet is 30.5 meters, so... Okay, what? hold on. Space Exploration Stack Exchange times. has the answer for us. Um, 1.62. <laughs> humans can survive uh, an impact at velocities of 110 and 160 miles per hour. The moon's gravity isn't sufficient to kill you. So you'd be going when you hit the ground at just shy of 50, 50, uh, what, meters per second. Yeah. Oh. So, Does that right? That seems, that seems... have anything we can use to sort of volley him over the wall? That doesn't seem right, hang on. Ooh. I mean, yeah, like... if he's gonna hit the ground, he might as well do so in a useful way. <laughs> Like, can we, like, get, like, do we have, like, any, like, a parachute or, like, a big canvas or anything we could use to, so, like, sort of slingshot him, trampoline him back over the wall? I'm going to check my inventory. Uh, uh, ironically, I have a token of okay. In ball, order but, to um... die from a fall on the moon, you would have to jump from a height of 829.49 meters. Okay. <laughs> So it won't kill me, but it will probably do some damage. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. That's what I would do. Yeah. Yes. I would like to be able to hit him, but I don't have anything <laughs> I could use to, like, to <laughs> racket him over the side. Unless we can yeah, sort of yeah. catch him with our hands and propel him. Like, I mean, it'd take you eight seconds to fall to the ground, just for fun fact. Uh, yeah. Good time. Good math. <laughs> uh, we have a bedroll. I, I'm, I'm I have not lying. Roll. I am <laughs> using a calculator to do that for me because I couldn't We could use the bedroll. If we all, if we each hold two sides of the bedroll and catch yeah, him on like that. Yeah, like that parachute game you play in primary school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're going to try and be fireman doing a fireman's catch. Yes, I, I think Douglas okay. and Shep immediately lock eyes and both agree wordlessly this is what they're going to do. We know what we have to do. Um, what the hell? Hey, SD. Hey, Patty. Utterly oh, ridiculous. God. Hello, fellow friends from other parts of the internet who've decided to come and watch us be ridiculous. Thank you. I appreciate you very much. <laughs> uh... 
Yeah, we're gonna bungee him. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking like I care too much effect, about this guy. Send him over the wall. He looks like sh slimier version of Nixon. Just let him fall. Nope. They can't. They have committed to the bit. So we're holding it with like angled towards the wall, not toward towards yeah. just over the wall. So when he lands, so he can... it'll, it'll cushion the blow and also over. bounce him over the wall and into the camp where he could distract the guards and then we can go in after him. <laughs> I like this plan. Distracted Bennies. Yeah, good. <laughs> On guard! <laughs> okay. Yeah. Parrish, are you joining in? I mean, I'm happy to help, but I don't know that I will be the most help. But okay, why not? Let's go to all three. That seems that seems good. Mm hmm. Oh. <laughs> Break through the hole Let's and go. Prison. Lucky number one. Hold, please. <laughs> Straight in the hole into prison? Straight in the hole into prison. I called it lucky in hopes that helped. <laughs> lucky for who? Um, if I realize I'm gonna go over the wall at that point, I would like to cast, um, yeah, I'd like to cast invisibility on myself. So I can land in the camp invisible. I think, um, Douglas whispers just, good luck, boy. <laughs> Thanks, Dad! <laughs> and I vanish. <laughs> In an oily sheen. Ugh. The beige sheen comes so up. So unpleasant. they eating stew in the middle of their class? Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that <laughs> makes more sense. Don't debate, bro, while you're having a moment. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Oh my god. Um, okay, two things. I got a 60 in my wisdom save, and also Catherine, I live to make Sam's life difficult, which is why I constantly interrupt him. Um, I feel uh, actually because we moved between scenes, my microphone went off. Um, and for the uh, the audience, Benetton has fla flown over the the walls on this uh, catapult and landed through the skylight in the prison, hitting against a large whale. Invisibly. 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 I want to know what the whale thinks, given they've just been bonked by an invisible something. <laughs> <laughs> it lets yes. out this large like whale song and it, it, it sounds pained 
Do we hear it? Is it far enough away, close enough that we can hear it and loud but, enough that we can hear it? For the first time on the outside of the wall, you will hear this noise. Oh. He's landed. Did... Did... Did Benefin turn into a whale? We can only hope. Is that... Did we do that to him? Oh, God. I think he did that to himself. We just... Oh through him so no, let's feel bad um can i like eyeball through the gate or over like mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. i basically want to see if the tardigrades are going in the direction of wherever the sound is coming from yeah of course um they don't seem to be fussed they're continuing about their day inside the prison oh, go ahead I was just say, I guess follow the noise. Uh, wait, well, you, you, yeah, you. That's to the other two. Yeah, uh huh. It's like go round. We, we, we go round like okay. round the wall, round the wall did, to find like figure out when we were close to the, the sound. Yeah, we did want to see a whale, and that does sound like a whale, even if it is Benefit. Sounds like a yeah. a whale is a whale. Sounds like a whale of a time. Yeah. Let's not tell the automatons though. We don't no. want them to get him. No, no hunting. Meanwhile, on the prison, on that note, Benison, looking up at the, the moon whale, sees an endangered species, which is the only meat he eats. And he realizes, yeah, oh, oh no, <laughs> we met some whale hunters and one of our companions has gone off to hunt whales. And here is a whale, but it can't be hunted while it's in prison. So he should probably free it so it can be hunted and then he can consume. Can you make me a perception check? Yes. Uh, that is a perception 16. You are not alone in here. <sighs> what else do I see? Looking around, there are guards in here who have not noticed because you are invisible. But there are three tardigrade warriors and floating alongside them are two large attack seahorses. Okay. Is this something that we would know is a thing? <laughs> this would be completely new knowledge and something you have never seen before, Benethan. And this just confirms to Benethan that this is all fake and the moon isn't real and tardigrades aren't real. And the dark side of the moon is definitely not real. Um, can I see how the whale is being kept prisoner? Like, how, how it's being kept inside of the space? Uh, it's cramped. It is a whale inside a prison yes. cell. Yes. Um, it looks as though they are... You look at it and think... They can't be milking it, surely. <laughs> They're so fired. And you watch this, like, there are pipes coming out alongside its body, three on either side, and this black kind of ichor coming out of this whale. Can I see how to free the whale? Um, from where you are currently, you can see that there are, are a number of pipes coming out towards the back end of the whale. You hit it square in the face. Uh, okay. But back towards the back end of it, um, is where these pipes are leading. From where you are, you can't see any mechanisms. Um, I would, I would imagine it similarly. If you've seen the movie The Matrix, it's no. similar to uh, when Neo first wakes up in the real world. It's not pleasant. Are you trying to tell me this is the real world, Sam? Because Ben does <laughs> not believe you. <laughs> um, Ben's gonna move towards the butt of the whale. Okay, can you continue to make a stealth check with advantage yeah. and also with your plus 10, I imagine? Although, I would you have lost that? I think that's only when I'm in proximity of the yeah. person who's cast Maybe Pass Without a Trace. Oh, oh because you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't cast it. I maybe. didn't cast yeah. it. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah. It was Shep that cast it. I'm pretty sure it's only creatures with n nearby. Okay. Yeah, you got to move Within very 30 feet, yeah. 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 But I'm, I'm, I it's am still invisible. invisible. Yeah. Which, that's why I cast invisibility because yep. I figured that would wear off. Um, so that will be um, 
23. Yeah, no one notices. Uh, at the back of the will, can I see how these tubes are attached? Is there a way to disattach, like, deattach them? There's quite a large, complicated piece of machinery at the back that these pipes are all going into, um, which is then fed into a number of vats behind, um, okay. which are labelled um, for uh, the, the, Gillian, the Gillian Fates um, Can I read foundation. what the labels say? Uh, just that it's for the Gillian Fates Foundation. Okay. Now, I am the only person who didn't roll that history check earlier. Mm -hmm. Can I see if I know anything about this foundation that might mesh with this, what I'm seeing right now? Uh, yeah, you can try if you like, yeah. History, yeah. history check. History? That is a natural two, so no. These people might be just up my alley, but I'd still like to hunt the whale. Back to the outside of the walls. <laughs> I know, I'm going to think about what to do with these will. Carry on. I think we, 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 we should be on top of the wall by now, or at least trying to crawl Amber up, right? Yeah, I think we've probably like gone around a bit to go closer to where the sound was and then tried to get up onto the wall. Like, in an ideal yeah. world, sort of between where the training grounds are and the prison is, Sam, if that's a, like... Ah, uh, yeah. That yeah. sounds good. Yeah, Locational. you can make that. If you could all make me like um, kind of acrobatics checks just to make sure that you're clambering okay in that direction. 22. Ooh. 16. Seven. Okay, um, so we'll, we're doing that as a group, so um, you all pass that, you're fine. Um, and then you want to try and make your way over the wall. Um, if you could all make me another acrobatics check in order to get yourselves over. How are you doing it? Are you climbing or are you jumping? I want to give uh, everyone Tara's a just gonna climb. Yeah, just gonna climb in some places. If they want one. I'm not gonna. I'm I, not think, gonna I think Douglas is too up. old to jump. I think we're all climbing, yeah. Okay. I say Terish would climb up, probably one of the first people up, and then grab, like, reach down to help if anyone needed a yank up onto the, the wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I rolled uh, 18 total. 19. Mm -hmm. Uh, a nine. Oh, I'm not doing well. Okay, <laughs> you're fine as a group. You're all good. Um, so you're able to get up and over the wall, and you land in this space between the prison and the training grounds. Can someone roll me a d6? Sure, I've got one right here. Two. A two. <laughs> right in front of you, there's just a small tardigrade child. Can it see us? It's looking right at you and waving. Hi. We don't. We don't know that there's gonna be any. It's a child, right? It's it's children of the future. They have no judgment. They they're not gonna judge us for who we are. Does it understand? Like it does. It, did it say hi? Like as in in a language that we could understand? Yeah. Common. Cool. Um, she's just gonna reply that. Hi. I've lost my friend. Have you seen anybody? Oh. She's like literally just like drop and gonna drop down so that she's like eye level. <laughs> Think small kids party entertainer yeah. energy of like I've lost my friend. <laughs> you seen anybody? Kate's museum background coming straight into it. Like I I, I have lost someone. Can Hi. you help me? Find Children, me? I've lost somebody. Can you help? Yeah. Uh, who are you looking for? Um, you know him if you met. He looks. I mean, I'd say a bit like me. More like me than like you. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, he's got less legs than you. It's weird, right? Hmm. I think an extra set of hands would be super useful. Uh, you like, do... you can see her just being like, don't <laughs> scare the child. And was right, she is a liberal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you see that the, the two hands that they waved at you with She's worse. Just... She's a teacher. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the two hands that they waved at you with are still they're, they're like thinking and hands on face the ones around the middle are playing with yeah. a yo-yo um, at the same time yeah. uh, no, I've not seen anyone like that 
Oh. Did they come in through Have the... Have you heard any weird sound? I don't think so. I think he climbed the... He was doing, being silly and he climbed... He, like, went up over the wall, but then we lost him. Oh. Have you have you heard anything weird? Well, there was the noise from over there and points towards the prison, but I'm not allowed to go there, so I don't know what that's about. That's okay. Sorry. <coughs> that's okay. Why don't... <coughs> I'm gonna go and have a look, but do you mind keeping an eye out in case he comes this way? What's his name? Uh, ben. 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 Okay. Ben will be my new friend. Ben can be your new friend. <laughs> this is our cruel fate we're imparting on this child. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, if, if I find him, I will take him to find my other friends, right? Or you could tell him, if you like, that his friends will meet him at the car. He should know what that means. Okay. And she like she like nods in that full like, see, because that that way of like, as though grown ups have had a conversation that kids haven't been present for because grown ups do it all the time. Uh, kids get really annoyed by it. I see. It's a but, like, it's a secret. Okay, I'll keep it. It's like playing hide and seek. Ah, uh, okay. I'm, I'm gonna go hide. I'll, I'll watch. Okay, thanks. That'd be super helpful. And you small, see the small little <laughs> tardigrade child just hide behind a barrel. Oh. <laughs> I wonder where he's gone. I am surprised that I did not have to roll a single thing for that absolute bullcrap that got pulled out of my butt, but... <laughs> I'm just enjoying that that sounds the voice is just the voice of every child tardigrade. <laughs> like, <it's> just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you are Everyone's somewhere just between. Everyone's had me inside into my day job, but I'm just like, yeah, Aww. it's okay. Can you keep an eye on your adults for me? Because like, they get lost in the museum all the time, so I just need your help so that they, that the adults don't get lost. So you're somewhere between the prison and the training ground. Yeah. He points to the training ground to the prison, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll start moving. Uh, Douglas will at least start moving that way. As soon as he starts points okay. Can we see guards oh, actually still we start? Hmm. Uh <laughs> Shep's still waving at the kid. Um on the on the way to the prison the the doorway kinda is open, so it's like a, an open building. And there's no one on the door, but you can see movement inside. Mm. We're still stealthy though, right? We still got the You should all still, still all have your okay, pass without a trace. Maybe we could just just walk in? It seems like they're all on lunch. I'm down for walking in. I'm down for lunch. Let's have some peas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're all walking in? We're all walking. Um, can I can I uh, bardically inspire both of my colleagues in the interim? Like, I know technically it's two bonus actions, but like, functionally in our little wandering around, can I have chucked a bardic inspiration in both of their directions? Yeah, of course. Oh, I'm so confidently cool. walking the swagger. Just for reference, because I'm now at level six. Um, uh, there's a cool thing that happens with bardic inspiration at level six, which is that uh, if you use your dice and it fails, you keep the bardic inspiration. So it just rolls over That's and cool. you don't use it properly. That's a good one. So enjoy that. I love Unfa She's unfailingly inspiring according to my character sheet. So yeah, uh, thank you Mordekainen's... Uh, yeah. yeah. But anyway, not the point. Continue. So like you're aware of how it works. You have passed without trace and your inspiration for you both. You're gonna walk on in. Can you all make me stealth checks? Uh, 36. Ooh, 26. Plus 10. 31. 36. 26. 31. 31. Yeah. <laughs> you can imagine. We're not without trace. Coming in clutch. You. <laughs> meld into the fabric of this um, 
tent that you're walking into, you are invisible. You might as well be completely invisible with those stealth checks. And in front of you, you see this group of tardigrade warriors um, with their attack seahorses. Two of them are having a conversation like, it's a long shift. You th you'd think that we'd maybe get to it. Like, this is disgusting in here. Having, like, did you hear the noise? And just like, like you hear from the whale, you just hear like, <laughs> as this echo is being removed. Um, Violently it, unpleasant. It puts me off my peas. Um, I, can't, I can't enjoy lunch. Uh, has anyone spoken to Jillian Shut about m fixing our shifts? These workers sound disgruntled. Um, I don't want to ruin our charisma, but I think Douglas would want them to unionize. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paris is going to whisper to Douglas, maybe we give them that idea on the way out so it's a giant distraction so when we get out of here we don't get stuck. That's actually a lot better. <laughs> Like, yes, we should tell them to do that, but also, like, maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving little flyers behind, like, organized later. Yeah, basically. <laughs> How to organize in your Have you tried the Union? Yeah. <laughs> so you, you're all kind of, like, melded into the scenery. Benethan is still invisible. You're looking at the, the mechanisms and thinking you yes. want to hunt this whale. Yes. But first, I want to free it. Can I see? Is there a way I can remove all the tubes? Uh, yeah, yeah. There'd be some mechanisms in front that you you might be able to do that with if you. Okay. Um, it is this very complex machinery in front that just mm -hmm. says release, don't release, on six different buttons. Um, but you've had a long day, um, and so I'd like you to make me a perception check to see if you're able to understand this. Can I make an investigation check investigation instead? Investigation check, yeah. yeah. Just because I'm proficient and have advantage yeah. of those. Oh, of course. So fine. Yeah. You yes. can do that. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, that's a 22. Uh, yes, you're able to tell the difference between release, don't release on all six of these mechanisms. In that case, I will unleash whatever mechanisms will free the whale. Okay. All six of them? Well, if Ben understands which ones yep. they are. Yep, so... it is all six. It's got six tubes in its side. Um... Oh, sorry. I thought you meant there were six levers total, but you're saying there's six pairs of release, don't release. No, no, it's really simple. Um, you just had to, like, you've just had a long day. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah, no. Ben is like, he's like that gif of the lady trying to do maths while looking confused is what's happening, <laughs> but he figures it out and he's going to release the whales. You hear just like the stop as these uh, tubes start to decompress. There's like a hydraulic sound as air releases. You hear the whale moan once more as these pipes all kind of slowly but steadily remove themselves from the whale, who starts to kind of shudder and move. And it's as though there's some sort of magical effect has been released as it floats back into the air. And very suddenly and violently throws itself through the, the, the roof of this uh, this prison. All the tardigrades in here are like, fucking hell! What? The, the way, like, the, this shift is meant to be an easy shift. It's disgusting, but what? As this whale launches into the air. They then uh, turn round and what are the other three doing at this point? Um, as you see that this whale has been launched into the air. What time frame does this take place under? Like how yeah, like does... how long have we got? Uh, so the whole sequence is maybe about ninety seconds. From Ben having his like, what is stuff, to pressing buttons, to whale being released, to flying into the air. Can we see Ben now? He's still invisible. Ben right? is invisible. Yeah. If we, but we, when they were when they're released individually, would they? Sorry. So would they pop hold off, on, wait. Like, I'm invisible so until I take an action. So it depends on. 
Right. Well, this would be an action um, then. So oh, no, be... sorry. No. Attacks or cast a spell. Not an action. Okay. My bad. I am invisible. still invisible. Okay. Sorry. Um, no. So, no, no. So, like, if all the... If, if things are being released off of it, when, like, at what point in that 90 seconds would we notice... Um, about happening. a minute in. So there's another 30 seconds before we... Got about we'll... 30 seconds. Okay. Yeah. Uh... Terish would try and, like, hide herself in a way of, like, putting a barrel between her and the guards. Like, not... She can't... She could turn herself invisible. She's not going to. Um, but, like, not making it that there's three of them standing against the wall being, like... <laughs> okay. At the same time. Yeah, no. So you want to hide... Big smiles. Yeah. Uh, Shet, yeah. Douglas, are you also hiding? Does... Do they look... Like they're going to attack. Uh, no, they look confused. Like it's a whale. They probably wouldn't run at it with their with their weapons drawn. Okay. And the black ichor is it the same stuff that was in the petri dishes? It's very similar. Ooh. And it is starting to leak. I think Douglas is gonna try and like scoop some up with his hands and drink it. <laughs> Okay, you're going to scoop some of this ichor up. Can you make me a constitution saving throw? I'm so glad Ben is no longer the only one eating endangered species. I, we've, we've established that, du that Douglas is... Do his, his, his mind's not quite right when it comes to this stuff. He thinks it's going to give him like some sort of revelation. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, twen unnatural 20. Okay, um, so you you aren't ill, but you do hear in your head rise my child and together <laughs> let's do incredible things and that's where we'll take a break to see what that's going to come back to um when like douglas our old man has just eaten some of this like black ichor ooze like there's a, goo <laughs> there's a space whale in the air ben's invisible terish is hiding and shep i imagine just like what the fuck Whoa. What's going on? <laughs> that's exactly what's happening <laughs> Uh, we just wanted peas. <laughs> <laughs> when do we get the peas? When? Give peas a chance. <laughs> so will we, we'll take a 10 minute break at this point. We'll be back at 52 minutes past the hour, wherever you are. And we'll see where the fuck this is going, because who yeah. knows? Um, and in the break, please remember, if you'd like to donate to our fundraiser for mermaids, the link to donate is in the chat. Uh, and you can give one of the players or Sam in, um, advantage on one of their future roles. Uh, yeah, back in 10 minutes, folks. See you soon. Cool. See ya. Oh dear. Um, I'm sorry to tell you this, Katanga, but... I'm afraid that uh, this misery high bluff you keep talking about has just been a figment of your imagination. Can Katanga make a, an insight check? <laughs> Absolutely. Do you want me to roll deception? Uh, no point, because that was a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, it, if I notice this mid smooch. Can I flick my tongue out for a quick taste? <laughs> sure. Um, make a slight of hand check, I guess. <laughs> what Slight is with your characters and tasting things? <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's under... helpful. Mate, we talked about these, the, the like these body image issues, and like, you can't be comparing yourself to like, like refreshing beverage cunt of all people. <laughs> Most of the fleas, because I assume Dream isn't actually being all that careful. No. So a lot of the fleas do manage to like jump ship. Uh, and I don't know what happens if you pour bleach on a flea. They might be fine. You might disintegrate. I don't know. Yeah. Google it. What happens know. when you bleach a flea? <laughs> Live Psycom coming straight at you. <laughs> Look, Psycom's just being. Okay, so that name. So when the sex muskets sing, God save the queen. They yeah. actually, literally. Yeah, they, they, it's, it's yeah. they're quite sincere. Yeah. <laughs> A fascist regime, which we approve of. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the, I called uh, out with, with my own deep throaty alarm call as well. <laughs> what are you doing down here? Oh, uh, we're just taking a shortcut. You know, just traffic. We're, we're fumigating for sewer clowns here. You can't be here. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, I've, been no. Called, oh. I've been called worse, but you better shut your mouth. <laughs> we all know the real sewer clown is Elon Musk and his tunnels, so. <laughs> Kick me off Twitter, Elon, I dare you. <laughs> so, Boomslang will disguise himself as Reginar and be Big Spoon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, I got you, buddy. <laughs> so, so we we cut to a scene where this um, Yuan T, this snake person, is spooning a pudding angel. No, no, snake person disguised as a halfling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're even bigger a spoon than I remember. <laughs> yeah, I just um, you know I just have that energy. <laughs> Delightful, angel. Delightful, <laughs> and then we fade to oh, black. Oh, is that your full name? <laughs> <laughs> fade to black of spooning. Uh... <laughs> oh. I don't want to miss a thing. <laughs> so you see uh, in the room uh, Eridark Ariesis, who is a pallid elf fighter gunslinger. Do I have guns? Do I fuck? Um, <laughs> what you see is...
And we're back. And I'm talking in Benefin's voice. Sam? We left off. A uh, space whale has escaped from prison. Um, there is like black oozy ichor flowing around in the prison. Benethan Sharp Arrow is invisible in the prison. And our three other characters are hiding um, in the prison. Or apparently drinking ichor. Or drinking <laughs> ichor. Or Doug standing in the middle of the prison looking confused. So it's the good stuff. Douglas, you will have gone into the middle of this room to uh, drink this ooze that is coming out from where a whale once was. You've heard this voice in your head saying, rise and let's do great things together. Um, and at this point, all of these tardigrades and this pair of uh, attack seahorses are going to see you. Because you have just picked up ooze and drunk it. Um, what do you do in the split second that you have? Well, he said rise. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in front of me I can, like, climb? Uh, there's cages from where they would hold prisoners. I think Douglas is going to try and climb out of the skylight. He took the words very literally. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Sure. Um, you want to climb onto the top of the cage and then try and get yourself out of the... Okay, fine. Yep. Um, in that moment, can you please roll me an athletics check and then roll me your initiative roll, please? <laughs> After that, so I know exactly where you are. I got a 14 on athletics. Um, initiative roll is... Oh, I got a natural one. A natural one. <laughs> Are we all rolling initiative? <laughs> um, you're all hidden right now, so it depends on what you would like to do. Um, do you want us to roll initiative now so that, that way you have it? Yeah, and you can have it, it there just yeah. in case you it ends up. Mm -hmm. I think if one person's going into a six second counter, perhaps it's useful yeah, for the rest it. of us to have yeah, it. To already have it. Yeah. Um, uh, 21. 21. 11. I rolled with advantage and got a 9. A 9. Um, alright. Um, you clamber on up to the top of the cage and are trying to make your way out of this place. Um, they all see you and they are all very confused. One of them will just shout over going, Oh! Who are you? Where's the whale going? Did you have something to do with this? I'm gonna get it back. I'm just ascending. <laughs> but how are you gonna get it? Like, you're an old man. For now. <laughs> Don't even know what that means. <laughs> uh, for now, you're an old man. Okay. Um, they are not. <laughs> They are, they, are, they are not on board with this, um, so they are uh, also going to roll initiative. Um, you're going to have one round without the rest of everybody, but before we get to that, are the other people in this team, are you staying hidden? Are you going to bring yourself can I, out? Or? Uh, can I just ask how many of them there are? Is it just two? Uh, no, there are three of them, and there three, are two I of the seahorses as well. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I was just trying to remember i was like two three three two 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 three great um i think seeing my newfound father figure potentially in trouble uh benethan <laughs> is going to take out his longbow and get ready to fight okay uh that is totally fine as well um right uh first round i'm gonna uh get that set over i'll move you over to your map as well um, so you can see exactly what it is that you're looking at. And there we go. I'll move it over as well so it's in the right place. So it's moved to the screen. Mm. So, um, it is going to come to... Where have all my things gone? Uh, it is going to come to... Of them, not of you. Um, <laughs> Douglas, you're all so bad. Um... <laughs> One of them is going to run at you straight away um, and trying to clamber up onto the um, onto the tent next to you. Um, you are 
on the left hand side um, and this one here is going to run towards you and try and take a swipe at you um, and that is going to be uh, two great sword attacks that are going to aim at you. One of them is a 19, does that hit? It does. Um, and that is going to be six points of damage that they slice this old man with as he's trying to retrieve a retrieve a whale um I'm glad i fixed your nose earlier that's <laughs> i know <laughs> this could get bad uh, this isn't how you ascend the other two are uh, just gonna watch because they're very confused what is going on why are you attacking that old man um uh the the two the two seahorses are gonna start to look around the room because why would an old man be here on his own? Who else is here? Um, and they are gonna try to perceive anything that is in the room. Nope. Do you need they... us to roll anything? Yeah, I was to say against the. They their... don't see anything at all. <laughs> they are very confused. But that brings us to Douglas. You have a, you have a tardigrade in your face. What are you doing? Uh, I, I take it I can't see out the skylight from here because I think the first thought would be trying to work at, like, locate the whale. Uh, the whale is you can st well it basically ripped the roof off, um, so it's oh. kind of still there. How far away is the whale? Um, it is probably about twenty thirty feet now. How far can Douglas jump in moon meters? I wish I'd worked that out because I genuinely have no idea. What? <laughs> what? What kind of math do you need? Let, yeah. let, let the math brain do the yeah. math thing. What would we need for that? Uh, so well, your normal jump, your normal jump in D and D is like uh, your is the number. Sorry, you to make a high jump, it's the number of feet equal to three plus your strength modifier. If you move at least ten feet on foot immediately before you jump, if you make a standing high jump, it's half that distance. But that's like on Earth. And thing. gravity is. So you'd, I would argue you could just multiply by six, and that would yeah. give you the height. Mm. Right. Yeah. Google seems to think you can just multiply by six. That's what Pretty we we sense. we divided by six earlier for Ben's yeah. potential fall so that, damage. That so that works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just to quit, the question basically comes down to. What is your strength modifier? Zero. <laughs> so you can jump. So you can jump three foot in the air if you move ten foot movement first, or you can jump a foot and a half in the air, multiply by six. So oh, nine feet. Those aren't good prospects. Um, so it's either fifteen feet or seven nine and feet. a half. Yeah. You want to okay. do it? No. Um, no. I think Douglas is going to or oh, maybe this will be a bad idea is this a bad idea <laughs> i think yeah, it's 18 he's... feet or nine feet <sighs> do i have rope i have 50 feet of hemp and rope everyone has 50 feet of hemp and rope it's dnd &D. it's <laughs> we're adventurers I know. we all get rope i was just checking because <laughs> i'm trying to work out if i can throw the rope i wouldn't be able to get purchased on the whale the whale's a big boy that's a that is a big ask. Um, and I don't want to harm the whale because he's asking me to ascend with him. So I'm just going to look at the whale, look back down and say, I'll come back for you, big guy. <laughs> and then I am going to um, jump back down to the floor where my friends are and say, Open, like, put my hands up, like surrender to them, and say, does anyone know how to get to the whale? I'm looking for a way <laughs> up. Are you saying that to us? To, to, or to the guards? To just everyone? I mean, I, that's, I just, I'm imagining you guys are still hidden, so I'm trying not to reveal your location when I'm saying this. <laughs> so if they think, just think it's a crazy old man, maybe they'll be okay with it. But also, he would quite like to get up to the whale. Okay, the the tardigrade that is furthest away from you right now will look at the other two and be like, someone put this old codger in chains. Stick him in a cage. 
and they'll start <laughs> to move slowly towards you at this point. Can I cast a level three sleep spell from where I am, please? We're not like because it's now your turn. Um, so absolutely. I would guess so. I mean, yeah, I will it's back, it <laughs> back to the top of the round. So yes, you can. Uh, so I think it's six. At level eight, th but three would so be seven d eight. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, 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 one, two, three. No, at level three it would be nine d eight. Because it's it goes no. up by two d eight oh. for each spell slot above first of second or higher, so nine d eight. Okay, well yeah. I yeah. have three, so I'll do this three times. That's yeah, you do. Uh, six and four and three is thirteen plus eight is twenty one. Twenty three, thirty plus eight is thirty eight, and three is forty one, and six is forty seven points of sleep. 47 points of sleep. Um, I mean, I'd fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> but I'm guessing you're place... casting it over the four that over, are still sort yeah, of clustered so together. The, the, the idea is that I'm casting it... So because sleep, if I remember correctly, is a, th is a 20 foot point yeah. of where I am, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to make it, if possible, cover the three of them, but not necessarily the, the seahorses, because I kind of don't care about them as much as <laughs> the tardigrades. So remember with the 47, that is like anything up to HP so of those. So it is, you subtract each creature's hit points from the total before moving on to the creature. So it's from the lowest hit points. Uh -huh. And then once you run out, so like say it ha one of them had 17 hit points, then it would I'd have 30 left yep. to do the mm -hmm. next one mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, so I have 40. So of those, the two seahorses fall asleep. Even if I was trying not to hit them, which is what well, I if you're not trying to hit them, um, so you're trying gonna to hit the tardigrades and not them. You're gonna get one of the tardigrades. That's fine. I will. I will take that because that's gonna be a weird enough thing for them to deal with. Yep. Anyway, that's fine. So that's gonna be. And then I'm gonna like just bob back down behind. I'm assuming a barrel at this point. That's kind of what I have in my head that I'm behind, but go for whatever's similar enough to that. Perfect. Um, they all rolled like absolute dog shit. So if there's nothing else you want to do, we'll come to Shep next. Yeah, I'm just ducking back, back down. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's just occurred to me that Shep thinks this whale is uh, venison. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've forgotten. Was so... wondering about that, so. <laughs> <laughs> the only, as he forgets about the peas for a minute because there's something happening. The only logical thing for him to do <laughs> would be to try and save Benefit. So he's going to try and jump on the whale. <laughs> My God. Sure, absolutely. Um, how are you going to try and do this? Are you going to do it from where you are with a running leap? Um, do you want to climb on yeah, anything? Yeah, unless there's any cool things I can jump off of, do some like on a barrel, but it's tent roof. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Tent got... like cage roofs, tent roofs. Those are the most likely things to try and do that from. Yeah, I'll try and I'll try and get some some roof help. Okay. In this jump. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so what do I roll for that? So it'd be like explain that again how we did it earlier on with your strength modifier. Um. What did we need? Three plus strength modifier. Uh, three plus yeah. strength. Yeah. Which is. What's your strength be? So it's plus three, so that'd be six. Yeah. So six feet uh times six. Yeah, okay. Times six is thirty six. So you can jump either thirty six feet or uh eighteen feet if you do it from standing. So if you're running yeah. off of something like if you're okay. running ten feet first, then you've got thirty six feet of Yeah. Because you get your momentum. Yeah, going. I'll take that running jump. I'll just be like Better Okay, you would have moved up onto the cage. Enough feet. <laughs> You would have moved up onto the cage on the left. Um, you will take an opportunity attack from that individual there. Um, so they will turn around and try to take an attack on you. They're going to miss. That's not going to hit. Um, so you will leap towards this whale in the air. Um, but I would like you to try and make me um, like a dexterity say, like a dexterity check, please, to see if you're able to grab okay. onto a slippery, ichor-covered whale. Uh, but if you could do this because it is covered in ichor at disadvantage, please. 
At disadvantage. Yes, okay. Well, the first one was an 18. The second one was also an 18. So You're able to grab on. You grab a fin. You're attached to this whale, which is starting to rise into the air. And does not notice. Does not care. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to get you out of there. Douglas is screaming at the sky like, Shep, bring it down. Take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess as a bonus action, I'll go into a, a rage because I'm so enraged that they would try and tie down one of our friends. <laughs> the, um, you, right, so you're... you're you're gone. You're somewhere in the air. We'll say you're floating here. Um, the the oh, sorry, gang. the the tardigrade that has tried to attack you will see that you've disappeared. Jump down towards Douglas um, and cast command on you, um, and just be like sit. Um, so I need you to do me a wisdom saving throw, please. Okay. Um, that is a natural one. No! Do you still have your bard? It's well, no, that no, it's only has a D8. It doesn't help. And it's no. a one. Only less a D8. Let's that fail, the fail, fail. Um, no, but if it if it gave you advantage, then it would. Matter. Oh yeah, if it was advantage, yeah. Again, it doesn't. Yeah. So that's that's why I was. If you want to give someone advantage, make sure to donate to your fundraiser <laughs> for mermaids. <laughs> See? Um, you fall prone, like crisscross applesauce, prone. Not even what you wanted. Um, but you're you're kind of like sat, but like unable to really move from where you are. Um, which uh, that's all they're gonna do at that point. Which brings us to Ben. Um, Ben is confused why Shep is trying to steal his <laughs> quarry, uh, the space whale, which he freed so that he could hunt and consume it. Um, but also realizes his father figure Douglas Sainsbury is in trouble. Um, and is going to dropping invisibility, yell up at Shep and go, I'm right here! As I cast Hunter's Mark on the Tardigrade attacking uh, Douglas. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or commanding J Douglas. Yep. Uh, and then I'm going to make two longbow attacks against that one. Sure. Go for it. So, first one is going to be a uh, 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 25 to hit. Surprisingly, that will hit. And the second is a natural one, which right. will miss. Surprisingly, that does not hit. It's because I made my own wood out of uh, my own bow out of plywood. So, um, can you roll me your damage on both of those attacks, please? Yes, I can. Hold on, I'm just checking what the hunter's mark damage is. Um, so the attack that hits is going to do. Uh, Uh, 11 points of piercing damage. Mm hmm Okay. And the second one uh, is only 4 points of piercing damage. Okay, so you launch one arrow that hits into this tardigrade who, like, winces as they take the 11 points. The second arrow goes straight into the thigh of Douglas Sainsbury, um, <laughs> who is going to take that 4 points. Can he even react at this point? He's very pro. What would you uh, like? What if it was you follow the command, you can do what you want. So. Grown creatures, I would have been a disadvantage to attack Douglas? Uh, well, you weren't trying to attack him, it was just this a failure great. on the other. It's just that the arrow's just gone off to the side and sunk into the thigh of the old man in front of you. Well done, That's fair. Ben. Um, are you staying where you are? Are you moving? Are you? Um, I'm going to jump up on top of something. Um, I'm going to jump up on top of what's nearby I can jump up on top of. Create some cages. A whale. Fence, a whale. <laughs> a whale. Um, <laughs> not the whale. I'm going to jump on top of some crates uh, anywhere, as long okay. as I can still see the enemies. Yep, you can from there. Yeah. And then just perch. Okay. Um, that brings us to the sleeping tardigrade. Who is sleeping? Um, they're just having a nice honk shoe. Um, which brings us <laughs> on to the um, Astral Hippocampus, this warrior seahorse, um, which is um, going to look <laughs> very confused up at the, the the whale and the air genasi that is like hanging above there. See that 
the old man has been hit by an arrow and is prone, so not a threat, um, and is going to take a beeline for the small little elven man that is on a crate, um, and will take a tusks attack um, at him, which is going to be a 13 to hit, which I assume that misses. Just hits. That hits, okay. It just hits, yeah. Um, so that is going to be... Seven point, uh, nine points of damage. Nine points mm -hmm. of piercing damage. Yep. I make my con save to keep up Hunter's Mark. Um, and that brings us to the other one, which is, can it reach you? Does it have that movement? Uh, yeah, it's going to fly on over towards the other member of the party and take an attack against Teresh, doing the same thing. Can it see me? Has it checked? I am hiding behind a barrel. You've you've kept yourself hidden. Actually, you're right because you, I have. You did your thing and then jumped away again. Because I'm so not a dumbass. No, it, <laughs> like, it hasn't. Nope. <laughs> so instead, it's going to use its forty feet flying to fly up <laughs> towards um, the hanging person off of the um, uh, <laughs> off of the whale. Um, so we'll, we'll roll again. Uh, that's going to be a nineteen to hit. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that hits. Um, That's alright. And that is going to be seven points of piercing damage. Cool. You're raging. You're raging, though, so you would. Yeah, I'm so raging, so yeah. does that get reduced? Half to three, yeah. four. Two, three. Yeah, it's half to three. To three. Half to three. To three. Round down. Yeah. Round down. I was like, can never remember if it was round down or not. Yeah. Oh, it depends on the DM, but we generally yeah. round down on yeah. science and sorcery. Yeah, round down. Uh, that brings us over to the the target in here that looks like it's more in charge, um, who is going to walk right up to Douglas and just laugh in your face. <laughs> is oh. that an action? Ruth? And that's his action. It will just laugh at you. Which brings us back to the top of the round. Um, at this point, the whale continues to rise. Um, <laughs> and you're still hanging on, but... Um, Tell us what you did. Uh, I would quite like, please, to cast Tasha's hideous laughter at the one who's laughing at Douglas, <laughs> basically, <laughs> because I think that's hilarious. <laughs> that's what I would like to do. Please. Of course. Um, uh, it is a wisdom saving throw of 15. Please. It fails. Stick. Um... So it falls prone, becomes incapacitated, and cannot stand up. <laughs> ah, amazing. So, you know, la laugh it, and uh, it can, every at the end of each of its turns, and each time it takes damage, it can make another wisdom saving throw to attempt to yep. stand up. Yep. And it is it has advantage on that saving throw if it is triggered by damage. Yep. Just so that you're aware. Perfect. Uh, um, but yes. Uh, it's so I, one's asleep and one is uh, laughing chaotically. Uh, um, uh, yeah. yeah, anything else <laughs> that you do? <laughs> I'm gonna stay behind my barrel. I think this is you're, uh, being, you're being very sensible. Great. Yeah. Um, so Douglas, you have watched as this tar de grade has walked up to you with no face but <laughs> laughing, and then the laughter <laughs> continues to just grow and grow and grow until it falls prone on the floor next to you. Can it go um, full Slater? Like, curls up in a ball, <laughs> like roly poly bug? I don't know what you call them. That's, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, like a woodlouse or a Slater. It right? just kind of rolls up yeah. into a ball. Um, that's exactly what you see. <laughs> can I can I roll um, insight to see if this puts me off the idea of ascending? <laughs> we'll see what you think when we come um, round to you at that point. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, Great. um... After that, we're back on ship. You're attached to the, the whale. What are you doing? I am. Um, having actually read my character sheet, I forgot that I'm a wild magic barbarian. And so when I rage, I should have rolled a thing. May I have that now? Of course you can. Let's retroactively just <laughs> Thank do Thank you. It's my favorite. I love yeah. wild, wild magic barbarians. Are are one the of best. I you can play the them in Baldur's Gate 3, the wild just so you know. You. I haven't got it yet. I've like. Don't tell I'm me like, that. I have to play as Bard to get first. that game. <laughs> okay, so I have to roll a d8. 
Plumps, um, plumps, 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 plumps. Yes, plumps, I don't know. Three, three. Thematically three, 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 appropriate. Three, 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 Is the enemy still seven. attached to you, attached to the whale? Yeah. Uh, no, it was, just a, of... it was just a tusk attack, so it's not hmm. attached. Okay. It's been... Eh. <laughs> Uh, well, so I a seven, which means flowers and vines temporarily grow around me, and the ground within 15 feet of me is difficult terrain. Now, I'm not on the ground. So you're not within 15 feet of the ground, but what you start yeah. to see is this whale starts to grow vines and uh, like a, like a creeping, like creeping vines that start to move all around its body. It, as much as a whale can look round, will do so and like moan louder uh, it is confused <laughs> you are attached to it and it is growing plants out of its body are these I vines going to be climbable you. they will be climbable um what i'm also so did did benefin call out to uh, i am no longer invisible earlier. yes I called out okay. to you, confused, because I am on the ground and you're following a flying whale. <laughs> so, I guess I would probably notice, and I'd be like, ah, oh. and I'll turn to the whale and I'll ask it, who are you then? <laughs> you're talking to the whale. Do you speak whale? Uh, it's not on my character sheet, though. <laughs> <laughs> it just... <laughs> It just makes that long, drawn-out noise that you would expect from a whale. You can't understand it. Cool. Can someone okay. pay, um, do a super chat so that Sam has to do the whale noise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Donate now to make Sam do whale noises. <laughs> oh, I do speak giant, apparently. Is that like a, is a whale like a dialect of giant? Because whales are pretty big. Uh... Yeah. If there's a donation, maybe we will say that it's like a subset of like of giant I mean, as whale. Yeah. We just need to play cool. Finding Nemo. We all know that you dolls have to exactly. be blind. <laughs> <laughs> so you've tried, so. you've tried talking to the, the whale. Australian <laughs> referencing Finding Nemo. Well done, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> so you tried talking to the whale. Anything else? Yeah. Um, okay, well, uh, seeing that my friends are all on the ground and then looking at it and being like, oh, my friends are on the ground and I, they're not being very safe and I should, I should probably be keeping them safe, so I'm going to jump down and I imagine that might hurt, <laughs> but that's okay. So you're, you're now coming from about 40 feet. So that would be four, okay. four d six. Can I recommend okay. something? And I don't know if I'd be able to communicate this from so far down. And also, I am in a big predicament. But it would be safer maybe if you use your rope to rappel down from the vines. I don't know if that will help. Yeah, we did literally just have this conversation about how everyone has rope. That's true. Okay. I will, I will, I'll do that, that's a great suggestion. You can do that, okay. <laughs> to not take the two points of damage, um, that's fine. Um, you can okay. you can rappel down from the whale back to the ground. Yeah, I'll Absolutely. tie it onto the vine. So you can do that, that is not a problem. Um, so you rappel back down towards the ground. Is there anything else that you want to do with your turn? Um, <laughs> I mean, I think that's... I, I, I would say that probably takes up all my actions to, to do that, so I wouldn't get an attack or... Uh, though that would be your action, like to get your rope yeah. out and okay. put it down. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's, that's everything I want to do, that, that's my turn. Perfect. The uh, the cult fanatic, or the Tardigrade cult fanatic is next to you. Is going to see that you've returned, um, and so is like, can it leave the old man who is prone on the ground and come over and try to have a go at you now. Um, and they are gonna take two swipes at you. Um, is that what they're gonna do? Yeah, uh, no, they're gonna do something slightly different. Um, let me just get up those rules. Um, they are going to turn to you and cast Inflict Wounds. 
Um, on you. Um, <gasps> which is rude. Uh, a sixteen. Uh, that hits me. Yep. Okay. Uh, right. So that is three d ten damage. Ooh. Spicy fighter. And that's nine points of necrotic damage. That could have been a lot worse. Um, could so have been a lot worse. They're just gonna like yeah. put these fleshy, beigey tendrils on you and inflict wounds. Um, so yeah, nine <laughs> points of necrotic damage, and they're just gonna stay there and look directly into you with the eyes that you cannot see, that you cannot see. Um, ben. Um, Ben is going to sneer at the seahorse in front of him because he has definitely met better purebred Arabians than this little thing in front of him. But he will one day eat this seahorse, just not right now. Uh, and is going to take another two longbow attacks against the uh, the one who just attacked Shep, I guess, because yep. the other one's on the ground. Yep. Um, so that is going to be a. Um, that's going to be a 15 to hit on the first strike. Uh, 15 will not hit. Uh, and then an 18 on the second. Oh, sorry, no, a 15 will hit, so they'll both hit. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, in total, he's going to take 2d8 and 2d6. Um, for a total of 6, 12, 18, 22 points of piercing damage. Uh, this Targaryen is looking rough. You've just like pierced it twice with arrows. It is not looking in a good, a good condition. It, you hear it l let out a whale similar noise at this point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I gotta remember. I get to re-roll one of my attacks damage dice, um, but that will be for next turn. Okay. Uh, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, the Targaryen who's still asleep. They don't get to do anything right now. Um, that brings us to the uh, the seahorse that is right in front of Ben, who is going to see that you've attacked its master and do the exact same again to you. Um, this time it is going to try to hit you with its tail, and that's going to be a 21 to hit. Yeah, that definitely hits. Um, and that is going to be uh, 7 points of damage and you are grappled. Ooh, exciting. You make my con save. Uh, yeah, I make my right. con save. Cool. Um, the other seahorse is going to come towards Shep because we've got a pro and old man. The other one's been dealt with, and there's no one else here. Definitely not. Um, so they're going to take tusk attacks against Shep, which is going to be ten. So I assume that misses. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that then brings us on to the laughing tardigrade. Um, so, what was that again in terms of they need to do? It's only if they take damage. That they... With. Or is it so, no. So at the on their turns they can do it as well. Okay. Um, at the end of each of its turns, so it can try and it can't do anything. I think. Yeah. Otherwise, and then at the end of its turn, it and each time it takes damage. So it rolled an eleven. It, yeah, it took damage. So that doesn't. Pass. Yep, it's still laughing. It's got to hit fifteen. It's got to hit fifteen. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Douglas, we come back round to you. Um, your command will have given up. Um, the uh, the tower grade who was next to you has not tied you up because he saw the other person coming, um, and thought they had dealt with you. So you are no longer um, no longer having to sit in the ground. You can get yourself back up. I'm using half of your movement. I was gonna say, usually, so coming up from prone, does that mean I can only stay, it's half my movement? Half of your movement. movement. Half of my movement. Yeah. Because I think Douglas's first instinct on realizing this, I think he's sort of snapped out of his sort of religious experience now, um, uh, especially because he's seen Shep get attacked. So his first instinct is gonna try and be a sneak attack on the closest thing that's attacking uh, Shep. Okay. Yeah, so the tardigrades to Shep's left, absolutely right. Um, you wouldn't take an attack of opportunity if you're... Well, you wouldn't need to move, but um, because you're, you're close enough. So, yeah, go ahead. Okay, cool. So that will be... What's it? Uh, sneak attack, you want extra three threes? 
3d6 at level 6, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I will attack with my rapier. Does 13 hit? It just hits, absolutely. Oh, I just hit it. Uh, 22 damage. Uh, which is double what you needed as you just like bring <laughs> this tardigrade to what? the out the ground with your with your rapier. Um, so it falls to the ground with another large wailing moan. It is dead. The okay. words wail and moan have come up far too often this yeah. one shot, Sam. Yeah. yeah. Is it the same sound whale, as whale whale? Yeah. Or is Some, it just yeah. it's similar to the whale that wails? Well, well, well. Um, you're all, you're both fired. Oh, also, B and B also, and Catherine are fine. Kate, Sam, no. <laughs> <laughs> I will say because I am a rogue, I do get a bonus action now. Um, I don't know if I can really use it, but I can use an object if it's around, or pick a pocket, or disarm a trap, or open a lock. You can... I don't know if anything is around that I could use as an object. Probably. I mean, there is a, a downed tardigrade in front of you that is holding weapons. Mm. Disarm the giggling, the, the one that's giggling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I attempt to disarm it? Uh, yeah, of course you can. Um, so, okay. um, yeah, it's sleight of hand, but advantage because it's prone with its laugh. Okay. Hand. Awesome. Or uh, like, yeah. So twenty-four or eighteen. So uh, yep, it has a great sword. You can take the great sword if you want. I will. I will take the great sword. You take the great sword off of this, um, this creature. And are you just staying where you are? Are you moving or? Do I still have movement left? Yes, I'll have half my movement. Yep. Um, can I get between Shep and the other enemy? Oh. Uh, you wouldn't be able to because they're right within each other, so you would have to try and shove it, um, which you can't do this round. Okay, well, I'll move in that direction then. Okay. You can move here. We now move back into the shadows for the creature who's definitely not here. <laughs> um, okay, so just to clarify, one is down. Yep. One of them is asleep. Yep. One of them is laughing on the floor and cannot get up. Mm-hmm. And we have two um, seahorses. Two, two seahorses, yeah. Cool. Are they proximal to each other? Uh, they are within five feet of each other. Okay, great. Uh, let's do another third level sleep spell and see if I can chuck them to sleep as well. Yes, sure. I am fully aware that I may get Benethan in the uh, crosshairs. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think Benethan still has more hit points than the seahorse, but also he's immune to magical oh, sleep, so that's fine. Oh, you are, so that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> <Sorry. That's> fine. <laughs> Nailed it. And also I may or may not have been considering casting sleep on one of those horses as well, so. It's all good. She got she got in first from the, from the corner. <laughs> Uh, uh, 11 plus 18 is 29 plus 29, uh, 30, 42 points of please go the hell to sleep. <laughs> I would rather call it after the title of a particular book that exists in Australia, oh. but I won't because that's swearing on the internet. I'm trying very hard not to. You're allowed that. to swear on the stream, Kate. Oh, they Look, go, I'll, they... I'll do it for you. Fuck. It's they... called... There we go. No, no. Yeah, the, uh, the book is called Go the Fuck to Sleep. They go and the it is read. <laughs> there is a beautiful Samuel reading of L. it Jackson. by a play school presenter. It's great. There is also a reading of it by Samuel L. Jackson, oh, which is also very no. good. No, Noni Hazelhurst, who is the like the, the, the person who basically voiced my childhood because she mm. was the television presenter I watched all the time reads it in her like kids presenter reading a book voice and it's amazing <laughs> uh, oh the fuck sleep <laughs> both sea horses fall asleep I doubt it she's just gonna come out from behind the barrel now because they've, they've all gone or asleep like asleep or whatever just going like this just a solid like dusting off her hands being like well I incapacitated four of them how are the rest of you going <laughs> Uh, so there's one of so, them um, that is prone on the ground. There are three characters asleep. You are all 
looking not too bad. So does the whale the, does the does the can, does the thing end or does are we still in the order? I'm gonna say that if you do not want to try and attack, the three characters are asleep and that other tower grave is gonna continue to laugh for now. Okay, I think that's fine. This <gasps> can we? I'm just gonna. Listen, I know I just had a moment. I might put you all in danger. I'm very sorry for that. But there is a whale up there, and I think we all deserve to ride it. I freed the whale so that the hunters could kill it, and then we could eat it. But we could also ride oh. it. And wouldn't that be better? Well, no, because then when it gets killed, we'll all fall and die. <laughs> Even though this is a simulation, so we won't actually die. I mean, uh, Douglas I'm... is going to shoot an exasperated look to Shep and Terish. <laughs> look, the goal of the simulation is to free that guy who's in the prison here somewhere. I'm going to look around. Can we see that person that contacted us earlier, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought they said they were still in the prison. Um... That's my bad. Um... I'm just glad just to see you're not is there a anyone whale? banging on the doors given a entire whale just went up through, through the roof, roof of the prison. <laughs> That's true. Just genuinely curious here. Um, <laughs> have we created a rocket? <laughs> Should I? Okay. If you insist. Oh no, don't drop the dice game. But, uh, trace. Uh, perception check, you say. Uh, 14 plus 7 is 21. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Hello, <rat. laughs> Snitch, stitches, kid. <laughs> uh, I think we should probably, um, go now. Now is good. Now is the correct time. Let's go find this leader person, Geneva Convention or whatever. <laughs> I can't remember the name. Geneva Convention. New drag That's name the name. Required. That's canonically it. <laughs> Look, if there's one thing Ben wants to destroy, is the Geneva Convention, right? Yeah. How far away is the whale up by now? Because it's got a rope hanging off it. Do, is that all right? Do we want to go this way? I think I think we should probably I, go away from all the people chasing us. I mean, they can't go up. We can go up. Seems like a no-brainer. All right, let's go. Yeah, there's a bit of a, a, a ten foot gap. Okay. <laughs> are you all... We're how, given the moon's uh, atmosphere. How long are the vines at this jump point? It. How long are the vines at this point? Uh, the vines are probably dangling about twenty-five feet off of the. Okay. Well, we have a rope that goes down 50 feet. It's so pretty now, it's got hair. Yeah. And we can all jump 10 feet in the air, right? In the moon gravity. Have we established that? More than. Uh, more um, than that, you're fine. You'll be able to reach yeah. the rope, no problem. Yeah. Mm. All right, let's go up. Yep. Yeah, we're definitely going to do. Douglas yeah. is definitely going to. Jump for the whale. You <laughs> can all jump towards the whale, absolutely. I'll take a 10 foot running jump, please, because that way I get my. Whole, like ability to get that far up. <laughs> ben will as well because Ben is not strong. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do it as well. Can <laughs> Chef will wait, knowing that he might need to help someone. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So Chef is watching as the other three will run to try and grab this ten, ten foot high up rope. Um, can you all please make me dexterity checks, please? Just flat dexterity? Just flat dexterity on this one. Uh, 15. 13. And Douglas? I've I, I forgotten what I said. I think it was 13. I think it was 12, yeah. 12, was 12. a 13, yeah, yeah. and a 15. Yeah. Um, Benethan and Terish managed to grab hold of this rope. Douglas does not. Um, oh, does Douglas, Douglas manage to grab hold of Terish? Or Ben. 
or Ben? That's a good question. I would say out of the two, probably Ben. Um, after the after being shot in the leg with an arrow, your jump is not quite <laughs> as strong as everyone else. Um, I wonder where that came from. But <laughs> you're able to grab onto the like the suit leg of Benathan Sharp Arrow. You're all dangling from a, a, a rope from a whale. What's the game here? What's the plan? R ride the whale. I was thinking we could let go once the well is over the leader's place in the in the gated community. Sure. Shep, are you trying to jump sense. up as well since they're all attached? Yeah. Once I can see they're all safely up there, I'll I'll um I'll take one last last look around for some peas and then I'll jump up. <laughs> Does anyone <laughs> have to speak to animals by the way? Speak with animals. No, but no. I have another method that one could speak to animals with. So. Oh my god, sorry, my camera has decided to not s sit still. Um, yes, I have, a, I have a means and way to, uh, to communicate if, uh, if it is allowed, I guess. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's do the jump for shit first and then we'll see if we can speak to yeah. the whale. Oh. <laughs> That's a dex. Yeah, check? just a straight dex check, please. 13? Uh, you would grab onto the the bloodied leg of Douglas Sainsbury. Sorry, I'm sorry. Do I take, sorry, I'm sorry. Do I take damage? Uh, you take more emotional damage at this moment. Um, you've been through a lot. Um, and you're all now flying through the air attached to a rope that is attached to a whale. Yeah. And... You want to wait cool. until you go over this leader's hut, but does Terish want to try and talk to the whale? I would like to do that. Um, I have, because level six and College of Eloquence bard, um, gained universal speech, which means I have gained the ability to make my speech intelligible to any creature. <laughs> As an action, well, it says it's creature. It doesn't say, it says the chosen creatures can magically understand you regardless of the language you speak mm -hmm. for an hour. Does that mean that you can understand them as well. Um, no. It makes my speech intelligible. So that depends on what, because this is this is my. I, I always argue this point about language, where um, if you can understand somebody speaking something, you can usually use partial communication, maybe not fluently, to communicate back. Okay. I or at least use um, physical. This is as someone who often ends up with people who have English as a second language at work. I may not speak their language, but we can between the two of us, if we have some comprehension, get somewhere. What are you trying to say to the whale? And then I will make a decision based on that. As an animal behavior researcher, I would argue yeah. the other way. That. My fish can understand what I mean by certain things, but I cannot understand what they mean. But they are also not trying to communicate with you. Sometimes they were. <laughs> Animals do try to communicate with us, and we can only infer their me the message's meaning, but we can't understand yeah. the meaning. Yeah. So I think an inference, yes, but like that's yeah. No, I, that's why I'm like partial. As DM, partial, I'd rule that as an inside check in return. Perhaps at advantage, but I mean, it's up to Sam. Yeah, I want to wait and see. Uh, I, just, I think it's interesting. Say. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, can I clarify with the party because I, it is four o'clock in the morning and my brain zoned out. Yes. What is our goal right now? Because that will dictate what I have. No what I idea. Am. You're mainly cool. trying to find these astronauts. That's what you've been sent to do. Yeah. We yes, got a bit way more specifically. I think no, we no, should no, go like more find specifically whoever's... in the hanging off of the end mm -hmm. of the whale part. Did we have a particular goal in mind? Otherwise, I will make that decision. But I just wanted to double check because I zoned because my brain zoned out. I was like, yeah. I now don't remember. We have what a duty to the guy who was on the phone. Yeah, uh, I think yes, in Douglas's know... mind, that's utmost. But also, he would like to know if the whale wants him to ascend. If that's something else. But I don't know if you know that he wants that. <laughs> So no, I think you have not told me that. I would argue okay. our goal is to find the missing astronauts, and we were told that they were at one point in the gated community. So finding the yeah. leaders of the gated community and asking them what funny. happened would be what makes sense to me personally as our goal. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, in which case, sh she would like to ask uh, the whale. To, uh, it's like a two-part question. One, 
is it okay? Because it matters to her. Uh, because it was just plugged into a whole bunch of stuff. And she's like... Uh, and two... Um, I sh have Has the whale seen anyone who is not a tardigrade in the gated community? Okay. Like, not a tardigrade, not a seahorse in the gated community. Can you... Because whilst, then... yes, I can go to the leaders, that's also not quite yeah. what she would prioritise. She would prioritise the astronauts. Why, camera? Come on. Do me a solid and don't fall a thousand times. Can you roll Just me an insight check, mm -hmm. please, at advantage? Yeah. Yes. Uh, a 14 and an 18, so 18 plus 2 is 20. Yeah. You, on the first question of are you yeah. okay, you're able to understand that yeah. the animal will wriggle its body left and right and left and right, meaning no, Yeah. I definitely am not. Yeah, I am not okay, yeah. And have you seen anyone who's not a tardigrade? The body will move vertically up and down. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. I have. Yeah. I think Terrace is smart enough to go yes or no questions we are probably okay with. Like, other things are going to be vastly more more difficult. Uh, cool. Um, she's going to relay that information to the others. <laughs> Can Guys, I ask what the whale how says? <laughs> making this, how you sound making this conversation? <laughs> um, technically, this makes me intelligible to it. So you would just understand me asking the questions, I would assume. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I can speak well, but I wasn't planning to do so on the stream today. Uh, Again, donate. Unless there's to a make big Sam fat donation, whale. and I donate, and I will speak well, but that's a different issue entirely. Um, and I don't know that there's. I think it's four oh, AM. We, we, we don't need. We don't need like. Yeah, we don't need. My poor neighbours. Um. <laughs> so it's also the wee small hours of a Saturday morning, so they might get a little mad. Yeah. <laughs> Diane, did you hear a whale next door? <laughs> so where did you want to go? You wanted to wait till it flo flies over the leader's tent and drop in? That's given that two people are currently hanging from Ben's leg, Ben's planning to let go at that point unless someone stops him. Yeah, I'm just gonna <laughs> let Tarish do whatever. I think Douglas at this point I think he thinks maybe the whale is just a whale. And he's very disappointed in that, that he's sort of accepted it. So he's back to the main mission. Okay. Okay. Uh, Terrish is saying, therefore, going to ask the whale, knowing that people want to go to the leader's house, can you take us to where the tardigrade leadership is? Take us to their Again, leaders. Again, yes or no question. Yeah. Yes. Take us to their leaders, if you will. Yeah. Yep. Another nod, and you'll see that it will start to change course and move towards the large, unusual structure within this gated community that looks fancier than the rest. And yeah, you will be taken over the top of what is the, you assume is the leader's area. Are we ready? Three, two, and I'm going to let go as we're over the top of it. I stay on. You're, You're holding onto my leg. <laughs> you don't have a choice. <laughs> no, don't have it. You, you can keep holding on to Ben, your son, who you have adopted. <laughs> um. I think it's yes, okay. I'm going to let go just before we hit the ground, so I hit the ground first. I don't know if that'll help or not. <laughs> I would have swung on top of Ben and b b like made Ben a pillow. Um, I, I think given she... that Douglas' first reaction was to not move, I think he's quite surprised. Yeah. So I don't think he's thinking yeah, this fair. through. Yeah, but it'll still take, like, ten seconds to hit the ground, because gravity and mm. slower descent. Mm -hmm. Um, Terish is gonna release after everybody else, because she's gonna just sort of be like, say, like, thank you to the, the whale, and be like, stay safe! And you will Have hear fun. back Bye. in your head for the first time, you're welcome. And it will just, like, fly off into the astral sea. She is, like, the most excited about the fact <laughs> that she just successfully, like, communicated with a whale. She's like, <laughs> drops to the ground and is is 100% gonna do I have message? Please tell me I have message otherwise this could get really tricky I do! Uh, is gonna message 
Shep and Douglas in turn. And just be like, I spoke to the whale, and the whale spoke back, and it was awesome. <laughs> Not. Douglas is going to look straight to the whale, Benefit. and he's going to try and wink at it as he's falling to the ground. <laughs> you blink. <laughs> Amazing. You all land quite deftly in front of the entrance to this Lido's tent. It is fancy looking, it is made of a richer cloth. There is no one around because all of the other tardigrades follows the shouts from the small child to go look at the yeah. prison area. Um, what would you like to do? I think we just storm in. I think we're Yeah, let's go ask them wanted... where those astronauts are and solve this Save mission. The guys. Yeah. Is, uh, I love being cool. The Me and Benefin are going to storm in. <laughs> I mean, they're going to storm in. She's going to do that big sigh of like, oh, looks epic. Um, and then like going after them. Terish throughout this has reminded me of, you know that Simpsons episode where um, uh, the next door neighbor, I can't remember his name now. Um, Ned Flanders. Ned Flanders is like, Please, Lord, help me guide Homer straight and true. Throws him out the window in a fire, <laughs> and he just hits the the mattress and goes back inside. Terrace just going, oh, and then does a somersault See, and just I, like jumps into the in combat. I'm thinking more Inara in Firefly. They're like, oh, for the love of God, Mal, no, <laughs> why? <laughs> but well and truly able to take care of herself. But like, oh, <laughs> so Douglas and Ben run on through. Terish following. Shep also following or running. Uh, yeah, I think he would also reluctantly follow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> too sensible, too chaos. Um, you go into this main place and you see that there is just a long, tall, uh, female hobgoblin wearing a suit. And two tardigrade warriors either side of her and say, Oh, um, hello. Uh, Douglas is going to um, immediately, like, sort of kneel down and be like, a, I, I think he just assumes this is like a queen or something. He gets to one knee and he goes, um, My lady, I'm looking for astronauts that have gone missing. I don't suppose you know where they are. Uh, you can stand up. That's that's very strange. I'd rather not. <laughs> You've got blood oozing out of your thigh. <laughs> um, her eyes kind of flicker to the left and then back at you as like, astronauts. I am. Um, nothing like that here. Insight Wasn't check. Not? Yeah, you can make an insight check. Uh, twenty-two. Yeah, you, you get the feeling that she's not telling the truth. And you don't do it, lie you, to us! You don't have your tinfoil hat on today, so... No. I do not. It doesn't fit over the space suit. Or underneath I'm, it. I'm, I'm trying to beat this goblin in the marketplace of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I will destroy you in a YouTube video! What's the YouTube video? What's the video? Are you the Geneva Convention? I'm, I'm Jillian Fates. I yeah, that's what I meant. I recognize you. You're that short little man. Gets angry for no reason. Seems to. I get angry at the oh, lips. Mm, you seem to both love and hate capitalism at the same time. You're very confusing. Why are you here? Hey, Why are you in the moon? <laughs> We're looking for lost astronauts in order to pass the test that is this simulation. You've seen uh, them. You're lying. <laughs> the rest of you chiming in in this conversation go, we don't know him. I'm just going <laughs> to shrug at her be like, we don't know either. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I'm just going to look at her in that like, we know, like, we're just letting him go along with it because it's easier for us. <laughs> um, okay. She's very confused. It's like, 
Well, if you wouldn't mind, I've got like a long day of meetings, and as you know, as I'm sure you can all see, a whale has escaped, so I have a lot to do. Um, take them outside, please, and gestures to the two warriors to come towards you to usher you out. Uh, we, we were told there was a barbecue. A barbecue? Uh, yeah, yeah, um, um, potato salad. Maybe, maybe you could sh show us around? I have, I have no time for trivial matters like showing you around my barbecue. Not my barbecue, the workers' barbecue. You're confusing me. So there is a barbecue. No. I would like to, at this point, Ben's starting to get confused. I would like to cast Zone of Truth. <laughs> Everybody stop lying to me! And I will cast Zone of Truth. On everybody here? Everything okay. within it's an whatever the space is. It's, a, it's sure. an area. <laughs> sure. Uh, it's so a hold on, I think they get to make a save. Um... Yeah, everyone gets to make a charisma saving throw. It is a 50, it's a 30 foot diameter sphere. So I'm hoping I can get everyone in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And everyone gets to make a charisma save. DC 13. So DC 13? Yeah. 15. Chef can still uh, 23. <laughs> Douglas <laughs> cannot tell lies. Um, I do know whether or not uh, she succeeds or fails then. And right. the Tower of 23. I can lie to you. Yes. <laughs> Always. She fails, but only probably just. Uh, yeah. One of the Tower of passes. One of the other ones critically fails, and you, it just, like, for some reason just shouts out, My mum never loved me! Mine neither! I understand! Can it's we... why I am the way I am. Can we be friends? Of course! Have and... you seen the missing astronauts? Oh, they're over there. And we'll just come and try and hold your hand. <laughs> we'll just come and try and hold your hand. I will hold... Wait, no. Is this a male or a female tardigrade? It's a female tardigrade. I... Can you tell? I'm sorry, my wife does can... not allow me to gender be a tardigrade. with I don't know women. that you can actually, like, gender a tardigrade. The tardigrades have genders? No, or... No. I'm doing research yeah. right now to find out, hopefully. <laughs> How many sexes do a We're science communicators. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So, Tardigrades, don't you tell me I need a free account. Go away. No. <laughs> How dare you, website. Remember you to gave donate me everything to help I needed people. to know so about water There are There are here male and female Tardigrades. Is this a there male are. or a female Tardigrade, Sam? Here we go. I will make Would a nature check. Okay, can you roll me a d6? And if it's odd, it's a male. And if it's, it's even, even, so it's a female target. Yeah. Listen, no, we need I... a non-binary option as well. Give, give the middle, the middle section. Ben doesn't believe in non-binary people. Dachmar does, though, so uh, I would like to I was going to gonna say, like, the tardigrade <laughs> might. This is actually super fascinating. Uh, they are hard to tell apart unless the female is full of eggs. Uh, is it full of eggs, Sam? Some tardigrades are both male and female and can make both sperm and eggs. There are hermaphroditic I tardigrades. I wow. and I mean, for real. No, and there are parthenogenic tardigrades wow. as well that are born from females' unfertilized eggs. So, like, soul, soul femme tardigrades can have babies without needing no man. It is time to That's warm cool. up my CRISPR machine. That's really cool. And turn myself into a part tardigrade. Um, <laughs> so this is a parthenogenic tardigrade that you do not know. Okay. I I'm sorry. Um, my wife does not allow me to be intimate with other women. Um, but I am still your friend. You don't really seem like my friend. I can gently pat you on the shoulder? No. Oh. Well, thank you for showing us where the astronauts are. See? She was lying. Why were you lying to us? I'm gonna turn back to not Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Douglas Sam, my gonna... brain is utterly fried from thesis writing and I cannot remember this person's name. 
this is um <laughs> this is this is bill Jillian. gates but if they were on the moon um jillian fates <laughs> Jill Fates. Jill Fates. As in Bill Gates. Because it was written of a gate. But you can't. That makes so much more sense now. The gated community. The gated community. Yes. That was good. I've been sitting here like, did Sam do the thing? Sam did do the thing. Nice. Also, I just realized that the green lights are making up. Apparently my computer thinks that there's um, a green screen and it's turning all of the green lights behind me into like holes in oh, space wow. time. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, it's, it, it makes sense based on what's going on. Um, Kate is actually the next Doctor Who companion and this is an amazing way. I will to take that. Alive. Yes, please. Yes, please and forever. Thank you very much. <laughs> so they've told Speaking you- Speaking into reality, folks. They've told you where the, uh, the missing astronauts are. But you have yeah. made them upset by not holding their hand. Um, can I walk up to the partner grid and just be like, I'll hold your hand? Um, it, it will reach out its beiges and like hold hold your hand. Yeah. Meanwhile, See, that's a more appropriate. Meanwhile, Jillian has just been like, "What the fuck is going on?" Get out of this tent and like pointing to the other ones, like get them out, get them out now. And the other one Douglas will... is gonna immediately stand up and walk straight towards Geneva Convention, and uh... <laughs> <laughs> and he says, "Listen here, I've had just about enough of your games. Why did you take these astronauts? What is going on? Why did I eat this black goo? And why aren't I ascending right now?" So do they need to? Bearing tell in the mind, truth? the zone of truth is still up. They, they do. Just tell this they to can. Everyone. I, let me read it to you exactly. Uh, they're aware this, of the spell. They can avoid answering questions to which they nor would normally respond with a lie. They can be evasive in their answers as long as they remain within the boundaries of truth. Okay, so the first question was, why did you take um, these astronauts? Yes. Yes. They were experimenting on, on the Icar, and that's only for me and my corporation. No one else. Oh, Ben, get, get behind that. Mm. He's not uh, what is it with this black acre? I think was my, was one of my questions. So yeah. this will tie into this. Why? Yeah. What? what why did? Why you did drink I eat this like, goo? What? Is what you said. Well, the, that was the third question. Oh, no, no, okay. that was the second question. That was right. the second question. Why did yeah. I eat this goo? <laughs> and why am I not ascending right now? Yeah. Yes. Like, <laughs> the... <laughs> so why did you eat it? It's a very addictive substance and I stood to make a lot of money from it. Why are you not ascending? And what? <laughs> I, I truly don't know. I don't know why you would be. Is it because, is my life truly that empty? Or is it just not in the cards? Is this substance, this ichor, what is it? What is it really? It's whale ichor. It's space whale ichor. I don't know what that means, Sunshine. It's a fantastical substance that we're only still learning its properties and why we must travel and mine uh, and hunt whales. I think Douglas doesn't like the idea of hunting whales. And so at this point, I think he's just going to punch the, the Geneva Convention in the face. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions before she takes a fist to the face? Yeah, yeah, but before you actually punch her in the face, my, my question was going to be, what what are you going to do with the Ica, though? Because obviously you're researching it, and usually researchers really like to share with other... Like, she's going to go on a bit of a like scientific tirade, because the, they're astronauts on the moon, she can, uh, about like research being a collaborative exercise, and if they isolate all of their research into one tiny echo chamber, then they're never going to get the full outcome of good research because they need multiple brains from multiple sources because that's how you get the best outcomes that's basically the rant i just need you to know but. that your camera or your microphone cut out so instead of outcome you just said come um <laughs> <laughs> right thanks mike um <laughs> yeah uh She's just gonna look, look at I think you the point i'm making stands <laughs> <this time>. Absolutely. <laughs> she will look at you and say and I'm holding hands 
with a tardigrade at this point, just to remind you that this is what she's looking at. Is this, like, bond between two species? <laughs> you ask a lot of questions. Questions you have no real right to know the answers to. Just because you and your ilk speak very fast, it doesn't mean that I will give up all of the answers. Oh, I'm just a curious person. That's why I speak really fast, and that's why I wanted to put as much information into one sentence as I possibly could, but that's okay. <laughs> I was just wondering. She then takes a fist to the face. As, uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly like that. That is exactly <laughs> the order of things. <laughs> like, I have precisely 60 seconds to say all of this. That, yeah. <laughs> I just uh, see in slow motion the fist coming in. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep talking. And then, bop. I don't know. <laughs> um, as <laughs> Douglas punches her in the face, can you please roll me attack and everybody roll initiative for this last little bit of yeah. this part two of your time on the moon with Gwyneth Paltrow slash. Bill Gates. Natural 20. Okay, okay. I'm doing an arm strike, right? An uh, arm strike, yep. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. That's a 12. A 12 does not hit, so you kind of glance off of her face with your old man arms. <laughs> um. That's not as satisfying as you'd like to get you in that speech. <laughs> just me. Sometimes you just need the punch to happen, whether it hurts or not. Yeah. The fact that they know that they got punched in the face, sometimes that's enough. Uh, I got a 19 for initiative, if that helps. Uh, 22 19. total for me. I got a 13. Yep. 13 for me as well, initiative. Um, my dex is plus three, mm -hmm. if that helps. Oh, mine's plus two. You go ahead. Okay. The okay. real question is, which side is that one tardigrade going to be fighting on? We shall find out. In just I'm holding its hand right now. You are, which We're means friends. you might get hurt real bad. <laughs> That's all right. I'm a bard. If I go down, you're all, you're all going to be stuffed for healing. So good luck. Oh, I can heal. <laughs> I can heal, baby. No, no, Ben <laughs> will. Would but ben would he? Will no. Ben? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I said you're all stuffed for healing. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to be the first dead body on the moon. It might as well be us. Like... Um, at that point, we enter our combat, and Ben is somehow up first. It's because I have advantage on initiative rolls. Um, okay, I'm going to once again cast Hunter's Mark on the Geneva Convention, um, and then make two... I'm guessing I'm not in melee range. Ah, oh, there's a map. No, we're That's not right not now. That's not the right map. Oh, different map. Sorry, I'll move you over. That's okay. There you are. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, Ooh. I am going to make two longbow attacks on Geneva Convention. Okay. Um, the first is going to be an 18 to hit. Uh, that will hit, yes. And the second's a 19. So two hits. Okie doke. For a total of 16 points of... Uh, oh, wait, hold on. I can reroll damage. Um, 18 points of um, piercing damage. Okay, perfect. Um, and that else? is my turn. Okay, nope, okay. that's my turn. Stay where you are, that's fine. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Uh, Teresh, you're up next. Um... How does the one whose hand I'm holding, I mean, I know that they don't really have faces, so I can't really get like an emotional reaction, but like at the moment that the other one got punched in the face, did the one whose hand I'm holding have any reaction of any kind? Vibe, it's going to dictate what, what I do. Vibe check wise, they don't seem yeah. to have changed much. Okay. Uh, in which case above uh the, the don't want to call them geneva convention jillian <laughs> jillian fates jillian fates thank you i was like jillian gates is not right right uh above their head is there like a ceiling of some kind uh yeah <laughs> ever so slightly yeah it'd be um there'd be some fixtures in the ceiling 
cast chatter on is kind of my question yeah so uh, above this desk in the middle there would be a chandelier you know my whole thing about that perfect <laughs> yes please <laughs> uh, i would like to cast uh now let's see it is a 10 foot radius sphere so what i would like is to hit basically anything from the roof down above Jillian Fates' head, and if that happens to also get the top of Jillian Fates' head, I won't be sad about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, you probably wouldn't uh, get her ten foot, the shatter. Just for, ten foot radius, which means 20 foot diameter sphere. <laughs> so it depends on how tall the room is. Uh, yeah, you might... You, yeah, yeah. You like The edge of this sphere would just clip the top of her head. Great, she gets to make a con save. Oh. Con save, <laughs> 15. absolutely. Con save of 15, please. Yes. Um, she fails. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so, she's not made of inorganic material because she's a tardigrade, but I need... She's a hobgoblin. She's a hobgoblin. Yeah. Oh, she's a hobgoblin. So, yeah. she's like... And um, insults of hobgoblins everywhere. This is true. And also... Uh, I'm about to roll thunder damage. Any non-magical object that is not being worn or carried takes this damage, which means, say, I don't know, a chandelier and the roof. Yep. Uh, takes 17 points of thunder damage on a failed save, so. Okay. Uh, bomb. And yeah. then I don't know what happens to said chandelier. I don't know if it's, say, I don't know, sprays her with a whole bunch of broken Very glass slowly. and other things uh well here's the thing um this is quite a big chandelier it is a fancy room douglas is right up in her face yeah. um I... so they're yeah. both of them are going to take 3d6 of damage based on this being about 30 pounds worth of stuff that's fallen on them um oh. i will roll that shall i yes you should roll that Absolutely. or do you want to roll it no 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 you, go for it. It. you roll it uh, is 11 points of, oh my god, our chandelier. Yeah. Sorry, Douglas. 11 <laughs> it's alright. He died as he lived. <laughs> dead? Under a chandelier? I, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. I've got half my health left. It's fine. Swinging it's fine. from the chandelier? <laughs> like, is that the... It is fair to note... a moment? <laughs> it is fair to note the zone of truth is still active, so Douglas, you yeah. still can't lie. Um, <laughs> do you have yeah. anything to say um, about this? This is really painful! So just painful. for clarity, that is... <laughs> 17 points to her yep. for thunder damage. And then an additional 11. 11 points of whatever stabby or folly or whatever damage from the chandelier. Stabby yep. folly damage. That's that's what they call it. Perfect. Yeah. Anything else? Is that you? Um, She's gonna... I mean, I guess technically dragging the tardigrade with her get to the edge of the room if she's not already. So, like, she's away from... As far away from Hobgoblin Lady as she can get. She's happy okay. to bring little Tardigrade Buddy along with her. That's fine. Okay, perfect. Um, that brings us to the other Tardigrade, who is going to move right up on Ben. Um, uh, who Because they were able to tell the, the, the spell that was cast on them, trying to tell their deepest, darkest secrets. And is just going to punch them twice. Um, right in the face. Uh, the first one is going to be a 19. That hits. And the second one's going to be a natural 20 for 24. Um, uh, so that is going to be. Uh, whoop. Where's my dice? That's going to be one of these. Um, what's that? And then. <laughs> I don't think. I think Alex likes Ben very much. Uh... Oh, no one likes Ben very much, <laughs> including me. No, just more the idea of like, hell yeah, fuck Ben's shit up. Not on the side of the party anymore. <laughs> on the side of fucking Ben. You're going to take 19 points of bludgeoning damage as this punches you. Can you separate that out into the two separate attacks just for my con saves? Uh, yeah, it's going to take 7 points of bludgeoning and 12 and points 12. of psychic. Uh, okay. Um, cool. Okay, yeah. I would still make my con saves. Ben has a solid constitution from all of the bullying he's endured throughout his lifetime. Uh, um, even as a homeschool child, he was bullied by his mother. fellow self students. Wow. His own self-worth. His, his own mother. Lack of self his mother. His <laughs> entire family. His neighbors. 
Yeah. He's like, Ben, you're doing so bad. Shut up, Ben. Uh, ship. <laughs> okay. Um, do I have enough movement to get over to where Douglas and Hobgoblin Lady are? Uh, no. You know, it's quite a long way to go. This is quite a big place. Quite a long way. You can get about two okay. thirds of the um, way Hmm. You oh, should rage to uh, see if you get the you teleport. Must be so angry. Magic. I was gonna say, you must be so mad about the fact that they got punched in the face I and am, you didn't I get am. to do it first. You're playing Barbarian, right? Then you get extra movement. You do, yeah. But also, if you rage again, you get another wild magic surge and we could get exploding flumps. Yeah, <laughs> so exploding we could flumps. get exploding flumps. <laughs> or teleportation. And you know what? I'm, I'm annoyed about this whole situation. This lady seems very rude. Um, everyone's been very rude to Douglas about being an old man recently. I've noticed that. Everyone's been, been pointing that today. out a lot. Like, yeah. If there's one thing that's um, consistent about science of sorcery is that Sam hates children and the elderly, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Let's just scratch that from the record. It's it's on the internet forever now, Sam. We'll just clip it. Died. It'll be fine. Someone in yeah. chat will clip that for us. Beautiful. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, what is Shep doing? Yeah, so Shep is gonna rage, because he's, um, on top of all of that, she brushed off his comment about the barbecue, and that, you know, he had his hopes up. It's been a long day. Um, that would make him rage, rage, to be fair. And I'll roll a d8 again. Desperate for potato salad. <sighs> to be fair, I love potato salad. Ah, it's a three. <laughs> Flumps, 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 flumps. <laughs> um, okay, so I don't actually know what this does. Okay, so a flump appears within five feet of a creature of your choice uh -huh. that you can see within 30 feet of you. Is she within 30 feet of me? She's not no, I guess quite, not. no. But you but could you, you move, could move okay. and then do it if you want to do that. I'll be happy I'll enough. Rage, I will rage as I run. <laughs> sure. Run. Cool. Um... Barbarians on the run. Um, so at the end of this turn, it says at the end of the current turn. I don't know if that's my turn or the, the round. Um, Your turn. Your turn. Uh, it's going to explode on her. <laughs> um, that's amazing. Um, so yeah, I, I'll uh, I'll do that. That will appear. I'll be like, can yeah, I make a recommendation? This card is something. It's something that is important with this one. Where it is will matter because whether it hits other people and other things will matter. I was going to so say, what saving appears, throw does Douglas need to do? <laughs> well, I was going to say, if it appears on the opposite side of her to you, Douglas, then it won't hit you, which is why yeah. I'm asking. Because it, I, yeah. as someone who plays a wild magic barbarian for another campaign, I just yeah. it's one of those weird yeah. idiosyncrasies for this. Um, yes. Yeah. So I like the idea of that as um, as he's running towards her, thinking about potato salad, this flood is behind her so that would be out of the range of douglas hopefully yeah yep. so it's just like big thing appears behind her um shep also gonna take out a little hammer to throw it at her okay make a range attack. douglas Absolutely. came to his rescue earlier so he's gonna be very oh. unsafe and come to douglas's rescue okay. this time sure <laughs> um so that is a does a 15 hit? Uh, a 15 does not hit, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so that's going to just... like fly over her shoulder um, and embed itself in the wall. Anything else? Uh, uh, that'll be the end of my turn, so she must do a dexterity saving throw. Uh, yep, yep. What, uh, what am I trying to beat? Uh, dexterity save. That is a great question. I have no idea. Uh, uh, whatever it is, she's not going to. So. Fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen. Yeah. yeah, doesn't doesn't. Exploding Burge. flump. It's great. It's great because they also come back on every turn if you want them to. <laughs> they do, <laughs> but every time. So she takes five points of damage. Perfect. Okay. As the thing explodes on her. Amazing. And it maybe vaguely is reminiscent of like. Take a salad. Explode from. Does she stay in the same place or is she moving as a result of that explosion? He stays in the same place. 
Okay. Uh, Douglas, you're up. Okay, uh, is anyone within five feet of her apart from me? Just you. Okay, well then I can't do a sneak attack, but that's no. fine. Um, I'm already in front of her. He's just gonna go for it with the rapier now. I think the time for punching is over. Yep. The time for stabbing is now. So... <laughs> Flip that too, please, Alex. I'll just uh, give you a time set for that one as well. Does a 24 hit? A 24 hits. You stab <laughs> yes, this woman. Close. And that does 19 damage. Jeez. What? <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. So you stab Rogues. <laughs> Jillian Fates for 20, uh, almost 20 points of damage. Grand. Anything else? Um, well, I can still use an object or pick up something. Is there anything near me that I could just whack her with? There's glass that fell from the ceiling. I'm going to stab her with a piece of glass. <laughs> so you're just, like, th throwing a bit of glass in her face? You can, you, can, um, you can interact with objects, like throw, pick up, whatever, as yeah. a bonus action. Okay, sure. Um, and I'm quite close to her, so I'm... I would like to think that it's going to be not too difficult, but we'll see. Make a throwing bit of attack with a bit of shardy glass from a chandelier that landed in you. Basically, I'm imagining you you pull a bit of glass out of your own skin and throw it at her. That is much better. That's much cooler than what I was imagining. That's hard as nails. Is this athletics acrobatics? Uh, do because we don't have an actual uh, weapon. Unarmed strike. Do an unarmed strike. Okay. But yeah. with slashing there's an damage? improvised there is improvised, improvised, weapon. improvised weapon yeah there's improvised yeah. weapon yeah which is it would be um, dex but without proficiency it's yeah um improvised weapons Roll. d20 1d4 damage is usually what it is yeah with whatever um yeah yep of whatever type that the dm me. decides Okay, so what am I rolling? Uh, uh dex attack. check. Yes, yeah, just a yeah. dex check. Just a dex check. Yeah. Without proficiency. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that would be like so eleven with proficiency, so that's nine, I guess. No, it, it wouldn't hit. So you're just like throwing glass at her face. She gets hit with the <laughs> the blunt side of it, like just flat glass against her. Um, it was a does good goal. Does she goal. feel insulted? She does. I, I can't tell. I can't lie right now, so. Yeah. Um, neither can she. She's like, who throws the glass? It's undignified. <laughs> um, I left us... behind my dignity a long time ago. It brings us to the other tardigrades who will turn to Terish and just be like, why are we fighting? Well, I don't, I don't know. They all got mad. and I just pulled you out of the way. So if you want to stay safe, just stay here. Yeah, I'll stay here. I'm not fighting. Thank you for mm -hmm. being my That's thank okay. you for being my friend. It's okay. I might have to let go of your hand just to look up to everybody else, but then I'll be back. Is that okay? Uh as long as you'll be back, that's fine. I'll be back. Top of the round. Ben. <laughs> does, she, does Sorry, did Gwyneth Paltrow not get a turn? Sorry, Bill Gates. Whatever. Oh, we missed but we missed Oh yes. yeah, sorry. I I was too invested in her getting hit in the face with uh <laughs> <laughs> every, I, 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 every, we, I shouldn't have pointed it out actually. I, I just want to know how many hit points she has because she seems to take a lot of damage Yeah. Uh, well, I'd like her good. to get one turn in right nah what, what? <laughs> one turn okay deadly campaign what <laughs> she is She is going to take out um, a sword that she has um, and take three attacks against Douglas in front of her um, the first one of those is going to be a uh, 21 to hit. Hit. And then a 17 to hit. Also hit. And then a 18 to hit. Also hit. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, and he's using two hands for this. Um, so that is going to be 18 points of damage. I really thought that would be the end of me. I'm still alive, somehow. Um, uh, yeah, that is her go. Back to Ben? Yep. 
All right, two more longbow attacks against her. Cool, go for it. Uh, that is a 19 on the first. That will hit. And a 14 on the second. Yeah, that, uh, that will miss. That one will miss, okay. So one hits. Uh, I can bring that one. Um, which is going to be... 10 is 13 points of piercing damage in that case. Sure, can. She's still up. Um, then let me see. Bonus action. Um, no, that's my turn. Okie doke. Um, in that case, that brings us to uh, the the Terish. That's you next. Yeah. Me. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, okay. Uh, I am going to. Yes, I can do both of those things. Great. Um, I'm pretty sure because I'm pretty sure that that is a bonus action. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to cast. Technically, I'm going to cast two things because one is a bonus action and one is and a cantrip. So there's that'll all balance out because that's how spell casting works in D&D because it makes sense. Uh, I'm going to cast a second level healing word at. Uh, Douglas, mm -hmm. you don't die. She doesn't want that. Um, and then she's gonna like let go of the um, the Tardigrade's hand so that she can spin around to <laughs> go to Paltrow slash Bill Gates slash <laughs> Geneva Commission. <laughs> Geneva. <laughs> Jillian Bates, uh, and just Geneva mock Paltrow. the living crap out of her because mm -hmm. <laughs> vicious mockery is fun yes yep. um so wisdom saving throw from her and i will roll up the healing for Douglas while you're doing that 19 uh so that's saved so my mean words mean nothing but that's okay uh, <laughs> she will just look back over at you with this tardigrade friend it's like yeah. But not looking at you, looking at the tardigrade, like pathetic. Uh, and you pathetic. get pathetic. eleven points of healing. Okay, is that it's your? Not thing? much, but it's not nothing. Uh, no, it's a lot. And then more I'm, than, it's more than, than like I go back it. to my buddy. Okay, I'm, yep. I'm just gonna go back to my buddy. But like, it was that sort of like step forward, being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that didn't work. Right, back to my friend then. <laughs> it's fine. I'm over here. It's all good. The tardigrade in front of Ben is continuing until it pummel into his face. That is a 16. 16 hits. And a 17. Both hit. Um, so that is... Uh, 15 points of bludgeoning. I am unconscious. Ah. Uh. <laughs> And I made my choice. I stand by it. And a, <laughs> <laughs> an additional nine points of psychic damage. But yeah, it's not going to be enough to take me below yeah. half. No, but I had fourteen hit points left. So. Yep. Okay. Um, he swoons dramatically. And no one cares. No. Um, <laughs> everyone just goes, "Well, at least he's quiet." Uh, um. <laughs> at, that, at that point, the target is going to move over towards Shepes, and that is going to be its turn. Uh, Shep, you're up. You've watched uh, Benethan go down. Uh, uh, <laughs> very conflicted. This whole situation is extremely unsafe. Um, okay. I know this tardigrade just came up to me. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to run away from it, I think. Okay. Um, Still very focused on uh, Geneva Convention. Um, and I'm gonna run up to her and attack her with my pickaxe while also using my bonus action to conjure another flump. Okay, you will take an attack of opportunity as you make that run. Um, oh, yes. Which is. They're just gonna try and punch you again. Um, that is gonna be a 22 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Us. Okay. Um, and well, I didn't know he had it in him. A, um, and that is 14 points of bludgeoning damage oh, oh. and 5 Let's points see. of psychic damage 
<laughs> sure. And are you attacking? You were resistant to the bludgeoning damage. Yes, you are, so take half. Mm. Thank you, yes. Good point. Um Yeah, I'm I'm still focused on Lady over here, so I'm gonna uh-huh. I'm gonna attack her with my great axe. Yep. Does oh that's a natural one. Um but that's actually I'm just I'm do I get do I get two attacks for that? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, do. I'm very bad at being a fighty, 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 <laughs> tanky class. It's all good. Um, <laughs> it's like three, four a.m. where you are. It's fine. Like, it's it's like exactly seven thirty. It was seven thirty. Yeah, yeah, it was whatever time when we started. Yes. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, Kate? It's it's five thirty where you are. Half five in the morning. We're we're going. It's I I have. You got the right mentality to be stuck on the moon. We're almost oh. done. We're almost done. <laughs> Well, I just got a nat 20 on my second attack. Yes! Ah, there we go. Swings and roundabouts. Okay, roll your damage. <laughs> Double damage. So, wait, how do I do this on video? Um, you just need to roll it Just twice. roll it and we... Can you do me a favor, though? Because you rolled a nat 1 on your first one. Also roll the damage yeah. on that, please. Oh, Sam, I okay. hate critical fumbles. <laughs> Oh, so I think it did the crit for me already. So 19 oh, yeah. on the 20. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on the, the 1, it's 10 damage. So Douglas takes 10 from, no! <laughs> uh, from that swing. That's extremely unsafe. <laughs> <laughs> but could you... You weren't put... safe for now. <laughs> 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 Could Chet please tell me how you take down the Geneva Convention? Yes! Yes! Air awards! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, he's got a, he's got a really big pickaxe. So I'm just gonna... Um, but as, as I'm going, I've conjured this slump. So I just want to actually um, hit her with so much force in the middle of her chest that she falls backwards into the slump and kind of just, I don't know, evaporates. <laughs> Perfect. And then the flump will explode, which um, yeah. she can't save again, so that will just explode in her face. Um, Jillian Fates is no more. But I imagine how the, the way that you've done this is that you've taken a swing with your pickaxe, put it into the shoulder of Douglas, and then was like, oh, no, actually not right. Back out again, taking Douglas with you. And then the other half of the pickaxe has come straight into Jillian Fates. Um, grand, yeah. she is gone. Um, Am I prone? <laughs> um, Sorry, Douglas. You're just going to have moved over here to the other side. Um, that brings us to Douglas, it's your turn. We still have one hostile tardigrade okay um i still got all my movement right i'm not like prone or anything no so you're fine. fine okay um one hostile tardigrade is it in within my movement range yes then i will is there an enemy within five feet no okay well then it's... i will just do a regular oh, attack no. uh rip your time stabby stabby um that is is 13 so i'm assuming i don't hit uh, 13 will miss, unfortunately. Okay, so I lunge forward, but I'm still very dizzy after being hit with an axe and stumbling about. Yep. So I sort of lunge forward and then go, Ugh! Cool. Anything else you want to do? I mean, is there an object around me to interact with? No, you're kind of in the middle of nowhere now. Okay, what do I have on me? What could I do that'd be funny? Um... <laughs> it's always the correct answer. <laughs> I have a bag I mean, of Ben is on balls. the ground at your feet, just for clarity. <laughs> Throw a thing at Ben. <laughs> I have a bag of a thousand ball bearings. Tip him on the floor! Trip it over! <laughs> Make it go wee! Don't do that, please, because I have to move now. So, like, please don't do that. That's <laughs> a dex check waiting to happen. I've got a flask of oil in my bag. Am I allowed to use Ooh. that as my bonus? Just lube him up. 
Just lube up yeah. Ben or lube up the tardigrade. <laughs> Ben's never been lubed up, so this would be a new thing for him. That's why I just he will finally learn how to make a woman come tonight, Sam, <laughs> on the moon. <laughs> I don't know, he's unconscious right now. I don't know yeah. if he's learning anything. He'll just be yeah. really I, confused yeah. when he wakes up. Yeah. I'm going to throw the oil at the tardigrade to make a wet-ass water bear. And I want to see <laughs> if that'll... I don't know if they'll do anything. Sure. Uh, I'm going to do it. Um, you can absolutely do that. You can try to throw this bottle of oil. Uh, I mean, what do I roll? anyone got any fire-based spells? This gets mm -hmm. a whole lot more interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um... Athletics? Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Just because my brain that, doesn't work anymore. That is a five. Uh, so maybe it does it's not miss. Ben. Um, I say I will say with a five, it does. Ben is covered in oil. <laughs> <laughs> um, this it, medical malfunction. <laughs> we now come back to the other tardigrade. That's like, you killed her. They killed her, and you. She hurt your, them. Yeah, you covered your friend in oil. <laughs> he deserved that, though. To be fair. Okay, are we gonna hit him now? No, I think he will learn his lesson. I should probably go fix him. Okay, you'll be right. You'll be right. <laughs> she back, means though. that in all the senses of that word. <laughs> I can. I can fix him. I can fix him. Sam, no, you cannot. Okay. Uh, Is there a spell for cognitive behavioral therapy? <laughs> He's too far gone. <laughs> I'm but... so proud of you for that B, by the way. I'm just allowed that in the Thank chat you. because you can't not have that exist <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> that, for those playing along at home, is W A W Wet Ass Water Bear by Tardy G. <laughs> we need, we so need proud. that one like a T-shirt. That's a pin. That is yeah. a pin that you're sending in us chat, into Australia. You are wrong. This trope is fantastic. <laughs> no, this is amazing. <laughs> uh, ben, it's your um, turn. I will make a death save. That is a natural 20. Oh. Hey! This ben, returns like to life! life. <laughs> One hit points. Covered in oil. I mean, you're, under, you're covered in oil. <laughs> No idea what's just happened. This, my wife told me this, this was unnatural. <laughs> this oh gospel God. choir music playing from behind you as you wake up wet and oily. <laughs> it's just like birth. Wet and oily. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think you broke it. <laughs> Terry, should you go? It's fine, I'm aware. Okay. Um, what I would like to do, please, is, um, so, I may as well just use all of my stupid bollocks features and traits, because this is just, why not? <laughs> um, I, because I am an Asima, have a thing called Radiant Soul, which allows me to transform and gain glimmering eyes into incorporeal wings, and I can fly. <laughs> oh. Okay. So, you know, just Amazing. for fun. Um, I actually don't want to attack this tardigrade. I want to intimidate the living bejesus out of this tardigrade. Um, with that sort of two steps forward, and I'm like, right, this is what we didn't work last time. It's fine. Yep. Um, and basically yell at it, why are we fighting? <laughs> uh, yeah, at the, the rampaging one, not the one that's my bud who's like, just gonna be why like, what the fighting? crap? Yeah, it's just uh, gone. Why are we fighting? And I'm like, you're right. Absolutely. Why are we fighting? <laughs> why are we shouting? Do you why, need it to roll a save? Why are we shouting or... at each other? I don't like it. Huh? <laughs> Does it need to roll a save, or is it just a? I mean, radiant soul is not like that's not really a. Yeah, you you just change so, your form. I change my form. That's my action. Yeah. What I would basically like to do as a non as like an additional thing is basically yell and ask the okay. rampage thing tardigrade why are we fighting make uh, an um, in the most like intimidatory way possible cool. do it with advantage um to intimidate this tardigrade okay. 
not persuasion. No, not at this point. No, <laughs> no intimidation is, is fair and, and uh, reasonable. Um, that's a natural twenty yes. plus five. <laughs> yes. It will look. Why round, are we inviting? <laughs> it will look round from having been like punching things. Turns from Douglas and is like, I genuinely don't know. The zone of truth. Then is still stop. Up. <laughs> okay. Then stop. You're right. I hear stop. All we want to do is find our friends. They're over My there. They're over God. there. <laughs> right. So she's just gonna Douglas land. is gonna like, start. She's, she's probably start like taking off and land. Douglas is gonna start limping in the direction they just pointed in. And over so there. Oh yeah. Ben. Ben's Ben's conscious. It's fine. Ben is lying limp on the floor and then gets up and just whispers down again, staring at his own hands. In this simulation, I am a god. <laughs> I would also like to point out that Ben would have seen me transform into a big, incorporeal, winged, <laughs> flying Again, creature. Again, he's starting to believe none of you are real at this point. Can you make cool. me a wis wisdom save, please, Ben? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Eight. Your mind starts to crack ever so slightly at everything that has happened. You, you were punched to almost death by a big water bear. You were doused in oil. Felt like you were being reborn. You saw an angel. As I'm you still came back, seeing an angel. As you came back to consciousness. I um, am the messiah. And meanwhile, Douglas is looking for these astronauts who you see are in these small little kind of incubation pods surrounded by this black ichor. Um, except for the one that you spoke to um, over the over the communications device, who is just tied up currently. Is he in the pod still? No, no, no. He's just like like gagged and uh, like wide-eyed. This is Francis Pettigottin. Okay. I think I'm going to untie him first. That's my first, my first priority. Okay. It's you on the phone, I think? Douglas oh. Sainsbury, Saviour of the Moon. Saviour of the Moon. Thank you. You you've dealt you've dealt with Jillian. D dealt with Yeah. She's been quite thoroughly dealt with. Um don't ask for details, you don't need to know. For now, just be happy that you're free, and we can ask questions later. That's fine. Can can we get out of here? These other three, it's too late for them. We just need to leave. Are they dead? I don't know, but I don't think that the whale will let them go anytime soon. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. They're being controlled <laughs> by the whale. They want to ascend. They want to rise and do great things, and there's nothing that we can do to bring them back. Mm. We need to go. Let here. me see what I can do. Um, Douglas is going to go over to the nearest tank, and he's going to open it, if he can. Yeah. Is there a way to open it? That's you can you can open it. There's like release mechanisms. Okay, he opens it, and um, he tries to cap the catch the body if it falls out, or if it doesn't, just pry it out of the goo. It's more like a prying it out. It's like something encased in jelly. Okay. Um, I pull it out and I close the door, and I'm trying to see if he's conscious. Unconscious, completely. Like, completely unconscious. Mm -hmm. Um, can I? Do a medicine check to see if he's revivable. Sure. Uh, I rolled a seven, so I'm assuming that doesn't tell me much. Unaware, this is a jelly man. Okay. Actually, to be more I specific, heard... this is a rooster. Oh, like, oh. like like a chicken rooster. Yeah, like a large, oh. a large chicken. Engineer. Douglas, the zone of truth still on, so he is craving the chicken in his hand. He thinks. You look delicious. <laughs> and then he looks back. <laughs> he looks back at Piddlebottom and says, What would happen to me if I went in this pod and took this delicious chicken's place? Well, I feel you may be inclined to ascend and do great things. 
That's all they ever talked about. What would happen to me if I ascended? We don't quite know yet. It's it's what we were trying to figure out. Uh, Douglas puts the cockerel down. The cockerel. <laughs> the rooster down. And uh, turns to his friends. And he thinks about it. And I think seeing Venethan struggling with his own sense of godhood. And uh, Shep, who tried to save him at the last opportunity. Uh, Terra, who's been so kind and patient to these these are uh, tardigrades and he's been such a good teacher and he thinks you know what maybe I can ascend later and uh, he opens the other two pods and tries to well he's going to try and get the people out basically and bring them to safety Step will come and help you <laughs> okay you can carry those three and make your escape um Everyone else is still very busy looking at the damage that's been caused from the whale escape. Um, you can make your way back to the the gate from this gated community. Open it back up again and make your way to your rover, which is perfectly parallel parked, which is one busted tail light. Um, and slowly but surely at eight miles per hour, make your way back to the base. And upon arriving at the base, you see Glodril the centaur alongside some very sad looking automatons that no whales did oh well, that's too bad did you find whales i released one for you well our best lads be better get hunting and they climb back into their, their vehicle <laughs> and off they go <laughs> bring me some blubber <laughs> and that's where we'll end it <laughs> <laughs> Benefin completely unchanged by this experience. That's okay, because as soon as we get back to Earth, Ben decides he will attempt to conceive another child, and he will die in a turkey baster-related incident. Jesus. Still ben, convinced of his own godhood. Ben's um, character arc is that he's become more obnoxious. <laughs> yeah. But also dead. <laughs> but also dead. I hate um, him so much. I hate him so much. Me too, but he's never coming back. Um, thank you everyone so much for watching this absolutely ridiculous two part, the second part of our uh, Sam's fantastic moon based one two parter. Jeez. Um, <laughs> B, uh, Catherine and Kate, anywhere, anything you want to, the audience to know, where can people find you, etc. Anything cool you're doing in the foreseeable future? B, we'll start with you. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm on uh, what was Twitter and Instagram at b underscore rich underscore sci. Um, if you're in Australia, it's National Science Week this week, and I'm actually um, yeah, so excited. Um, my university, Swinburne University, is doing a lot of events, and I'm actually uh, giving a, a hybrid talk, which you can be online next week, all about materials on the moon. So, um, yeah, any, if anyone's in Australia and would be interested in that, you can find that on Swinburne website. Just Google Swinburne National Science Week. Will that be um, available yeah, to watch afterwards me. as well? I'm unclear okay. right now. I know that my mum is really keen to find that out, so, but I'll, I'll tweet <laughs> about it know. if it is available yes. afterwards. Yes. <laughs> um, all right, and uh, Catherine, anything? Yeah, so for some of you, if you if you know me from the science background, I'm a I come from paleontology. I'm a published paleontologist. Now I'm doing a uh, YouTube stuff, doing like queer activism and some left stuff. Uh, Bridget Empire, B R I G I T T E E M P I E A B E M P I R E on uh, YouTube, Twitter, Patreon, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, it, it's fun. If if you uh, if you want to take a break from the science for a, for a minute, because I needed to after all my PhD was done, I'll come back one day. And uh, yeah, and also if you like learning about sad history that will make you sad and also think, I was also to the collaboration with uh, my friend Lost Futures on um, the history of Japanese war crimes, which comes out today. So if you want to hear some sad stuff, uh, you can go over there and you will hear my voice doing some voice acting on there. Incredible. And last but not least, Kate. 
Oh god, I have a list. Um, so uh, if you want to find me on the internet, I am at O'Sullivan Kate on all of the things. Be that Blue Sky, Twitter, Instagram, do Sullivan Kate on all the things. Even my website, because I'm when you use your last name and your first name, it's nice and easy to find you. Uh, projects uh, this weekend, we are recording for Dungeons and Doctorates with the one, the only Sam. Um, TBC, exactly when that's coming out, we're just working through um, some backlog as well. So uh, keep your eye on social media for that because it'll be great. I'm sure. I have no idea what's going to happen. We're playing like young people in a D and D, but kind of kids on bikes, but D and D game. Uh, I am also a regular cast member on the Meeples and Dragons channel right here on Twitch. Uh, that is uh, spelt like I'm about to do in the chat because yeah. that'll make everyone's life easier. Uh, in fact, I'm going to be really, I'm going to abuse that uh, power that I've been given as a mod. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and shout out yeah, the channel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whoops. Uh, so that's where you can often find me every second Saturday. Uh, it is not tonight for me tomorrow night for everybody else it is in a week uh we are every fortnight over there uh my show is going to the melbourne fringe i know it's edinburgh fringe right now but melbourne fringe festival is in october uh it is called all the best roles are written for men it is about theater and how the performing arts have a real non-men problem uh in in both <laughs> on stage and behind the scenes uh non-cis men actually is probably a technically better way to put that uh, and lucky last, I promise, oh my god, there's so many things. Keep an eye on my, let's call it still Twitter. Screw you, Elon. Um, uh, <laughs> and Blue Sky uh, for Shakespeare. So I'm in, we've done a recording of Hamlet uh, with an all queer except, I think, me cast. Whoops, straight lady rep. Um, <laughs> so uh, we are doing Shakespeare, uh, but queerified. Um, we are currently holding that material before publication because of the SAG after strikes so that we don't um, disadvantage anybody who wants to be SAG after in the future uh, but as soon as we can release it we will be so do keep an eye on social media for that it will be live on the that's how we roll twitch channel uh, for view for everyone's viewing pleasure very uh, when exciting. it goes live all the um, things sorry <laughs> <laughs> no that note size associates update is very quick uh we will be back on the 22nd of september i say we alex will be back with sam producing for a fantastic one shot that's going to be about a bunch of himbo tieflings uh in an original ttrpg system um, so that keep an eye out for that. That's going to be a charity one shot for September. I won't be there because I'll be a week out from submitting my thesis. Um, and we're still taking a break from our campaign for the same reason. And also because we kind of deserve a holiday after nearly two years of streaming every week. Um, Sam, is there anything else you want the audience to know? Uh, mainly just that there might be an in-person event coming soon. There may be, if about. you're in London surrounds at the end of October, keep an eye out. Um, Somewhere really extremely exciting. Uh, we might be down there. Um, so yeah, we more details of that will be coming uh, as we learn them, because our venue is still waiting on some information, because they have not yet opened. Um, that's a little hint, a little teaser. Um, Sam, are we raiding anyone tonight? Uh, yeah, we're going to see Penny Dragon Games. Uh, the Very other thing exciting. is, I want to say like the character that I'm going to play in Dungeons and Doctorates on Sunday. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to be playing as Top Heavy Ken, who is a, a minotaur who uh, doesn't do leg day. Um, so <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. Okay, <laughs> I still have to create my character. Love so it. with that in mind, I will. Uh, oh my yeah, god! I'll play with that. Uh, oh, can I just check the bottom heavy Barbie? I'm still playing so that I don't double up. Uh, sorry, class. I can't play bottom heavy Barbie. That's like... <laughs> that's too bad. Oh dear. I will tell you the class because I can't remember. I just know the, the archetype. <laughs> that's sorry. Right. No. Just send it to me. It's okay. We are going to wrap up the stream here. Uh, you're gonna have to tune in to Dungeons and Doctorates to find out. Uh, yeah. Top heavy Ken's class. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a lovely evening, and we will see you next month. Good night, folks. And good morning to those in Australia. <laughs>